true sports addict, this game has to be his reoccurring flashback. Oh my goodness, what a turnabout! Miami had blown a 31-0 halftime lead and lost 42-40. No team in college football history had ever done that. Finally, game 12. Boston College, Flutie versus Kozar. They broke records galore, but it was Flutie who broke everyone's heart. Miami played Boston College nearly five weeks ago, yet the memory of that game is as vivid as if it happened this morning. Remember? 45-41 Miami leads. Ball at the 48-yard line with six seconds left six when Flutie seconds. comes up on the center the and just does his line. thing. Flutie is back. Four seconds, three seconds, two seconds, one second. This game is over. Hail Mary, deep it is. It is caught for a touchdown. I don't believe it. Boston College has won. Miami, oh, this is, oh, that's awful. What a great play. This is just about the spot where Miami's regular season ended, where Phelan caught the pass. Miami's season ended with two heartbreaking, devastating defeats to Maryland and Boston College, and that was followed by the resignation of defensive coordinator Bill Trout. Since then, Jimmy Johnson has lost other assistant coaches. There may be more. So the Hurricanes go to the Fiesta Bowl with a record of 8-4. and four. Like we said, 1984 may not have been as successful as 83, but brother, it sure was interesting. It was an interesting season, to say the least, for the University of Miami football program, and a hectic one for this man here, Jimmy Johnson. And uh, coming in like it did, uh, Coach, it's analogous, I would think, to having the Benz. Uh, in retrospect, what was it like for you? Well, it was interesting. Uh, <laughs> I, I tell you, there was uh, something new almost every day. Uh, it was an exciting uh, year. It was an exciting year in that... Uh, I don't think that I ever experienced as many highs and as many lows in such a short period of time. Um, but some good things happened for our program, and overall, we're really happy with the, uh, with the year that our football team had. If you had to do it over again and had the power to change some things, would you have changed one or two things? Oh, you know, obviously, you know, hindsight, uh, you, know, you can look back and, and say, well, um, you know, I could have done this or could have done that, and it would have turned out different. Uh, but um, unfortunately, we don't have hindsight. You know, the, the biggest problem that I had uh, coming in was I did not know our players. I did not know our coaches. And, um, and so, you know, really I was at, uh, you know, I was in a situation where really I had my hands tied. It still just kind of boggles my mind to see what this team went through and, you know, they've been practicing football for about five months. Uh, and uh, it's the longest season I think uh, most anybody's ever been around. You've not won since mid-November, but again, you haven't played since the first week of December. The frame of mind of this team as you prepare for your, your last game of the 84-85 season? Well, I think they're relaxed. I think they're confident that they're going to do the job. Um, I'm really uh, pleased the way the defensive people have kind of pulled together and and really uh, reacted in a positive manner in getting ready for this UCLA ball game. I think they are bound and determined to go out and play well. Now here are a few things to look for while watching the Miami defense in the Fiesta Bowl. UCLA will run a lot of bootleg action because Florida State did. They were extremely effective with it. The Bruins will run it from both split backs and the eye formation. Out of the eye, it'll be the toss sweep action to the right. Meantime, quarterback Bono will come over here to the left and settle will be protected by this offensive guard right here. The primary receiver, the tight end. It will come across the field at an eight yard depth and settle in this area. This wide receiver will come and do an 18 yard comeback, while this wide receiver does the same pattern as the tight end at a depth of 12 to 18 yards. The key for Miami, this defensive end right here. He must stay at home, must not be influenced by the flow, come across the line of scrimmage, beat the block of the offensive guard, come around, get into the face, pressure and contain quarterback Bono. Now, one of Miami's most successful plays offensively is the Texas pattern. It involves four receivers. Here's how it works. Eddie Brown over here will come over and do a post pattern. Stanley Shakespeare will come over and do a square in. Tight end Willie Smith will come across the field and settle in this area, while the running back, Melvin Bratton, will come over into the flat. Bernie Kosar's read is the weak safety. If he bites on the post, Kosar goes to Shakespeare on the square end. If he bites on the square end, Kosar has a short touchdown, 
by going to Eddie Brown on the post. His third receiver in the progression series here is Melvin Bratton, the running back. His fourth receiver in his choice is tight end Willie Smith. If all four are covered, Kosar throws the ball away. Now, to tell you who's going to win, the X's or the O's. Naturally, we couldn't bring our entire News 4 sports team to Arizona, but from what I hear, Hank Goldberg is not missing the Fiesta Bowl atmosphere one bit. So I'll just pass the hat to Hank back in Miami for his analysis and view of the game. Well, it's about as close to the desert as I'm going to get this winter unless somebody sends me a junket ticket to Las Vegas. For once, Tony, I don't envy you this trip. I mean, being stuck out there in the desert to see a bowl game with two teams who have seven losses between them. See, I decided to bring the West to me. I got my cactus, my boots, my hat, my shirt, my jeans, and I'm all set right here to see this meaningless bowl game. Of 18 bowl games that will be played this year, only two will be significant. Of course, there's the Brigham Young Bowl, and then there's the Orange Bowl, where at least the winners of those two games can produce a controversy over who's really number one. Of the other 16, they're so meaningless that you have to look towards motivation to determine who's going to win, and Miami should have plenty of that. After all, here's a team that had loftier aspirations at the beginning of the season, had two real disappointing losses that cost them a, a bigger bowl game than this one, and it still can crack the top ten and salvage something. Now, they're not going to have to face a big play offense, that's for sure. Terry Donahue, while he's an excellent coach, plays it close to the vest. I think his quarterback's name is Sonny Bono, so forget about the big play burning Miami. On the other hand, injuries, not a factor except for Alonzo Highsmith, but which coaches will show up? That's the big question. Bernie Kozar will be there, I know that, and UCLA will never have seen the likes of him. Kozar will go out there and have a field day against their secondary, and that'll be the big difference in the ball game. and I think Miami will roll it up pretty good against the U-Clans, and I think that'll be great for Jimmy Johnson because right now he sorely needs a convincing victory. I think he's done a good job, and he deserves that victory as well. And as for me, I'll be here with my hat, my boots, my jeans, my cactus, the bay, the ocean out there. And I got horses, too. If I want to go out to call her, I can bet on them. <laughs> Thanks, Hank. Somehow I knew you'd make the best of your situation. Well, when we return, Jimmy Cephalo takes a nostalgic look back at his Fiesta experience, and we'll show you what we experienced in our week out here. We know how much you love sports. So what would it take to get you to pick up the phone and order Sports Illustrated? A free trip to the World Series? Sorry. How about a discount when you subscribe? Say, 10% off? 25? 35%? How about almost 50% off the cover price? That's a savings of nearly a dollar on every issue. And you'll fast break into basketball right through the NBA playoffs. Plus, coverage of hockey, baseball, and football. No one captures the spirit of the game better than Sports Illustrated. So why aren't you dialing? All right. What if we also include Sports Illustrated's 1985 baseball preview issue with profiles, feature stories, and predictions for every division, every team? More? How about our famous swimsuit issue that covers one of the most exciting spectator sports under the sun? Not enough? Well, are you a baseball fan? We'll take you from spring training to the heat of the pennant races. More? Okay, we'll even give you this free 1985 baseball schedule for every major league team. So, how about a final bonus? This exclusive Sports Illustrated AM-FM sound set. It's your personal hi-fi, complete with headphones. So why aren't you pressing those pretty little buttons? Oh, the phone number. It's 1-800-621-3500. 30 issues of Sports Illustrated for three easy monthly installments of just $9.89. That's almost half off the cover price, including the baseball preview and the swimsuit issue, plus this 1985 baseball schedule and AM-FM personal hi-fi, free with your paid subscription. So now what? I can't see the phone number. It's 1-800-621-3500. Call now. Jimmy Johnson with the University of Miami. 
my wife, Linda Kay, and everyone here at the Fiesta Bowl would like to wish everybody a happy holidays and a happy new year. Another member of our staff, Jimmy Cephalo, could not make it out here with us. He had some dolphin business to take care of. But Jimmy already knows what it's like to be out here for an entire week enjoying the festivities. He played in the Fiesta Bowl a few years back. In fact, Cephalo had a lot of bowl experience during his college days. Every new year, he was someplace new. Tony, a bowl bid is supposed to be a reward for a long and successful season. During my four years at Penn State, we were rewarded well. Four bowls. The Cotton Gator Sugar and Fiesta, my last one in 1977. So here goes my Fiesta flashback. Here we are arriving in Arizona. Were we ever happy to get out of that sub-zero weather back east? I would have almost paid my own way. You see, bowl committees treat you better than your mother and father almost, uh, like, dig like uh, visiting dignitaries. That's a good word for it. No holiday ends for us. We stayed at the Camelback Inn, fit for a chic. Bowl week means a lot of banquets and even more speeches. And of course, everyone gets a plaque to prove you were there and a watch. I've still got my four bowl watches. Don't know where the plaque is, though. Back then, the Fiesta Bowl was played on Christmas Day. They even had a cactus decorated like a Christmas tree. It just didn't seem the same. But the Fiesta Bowl really knows how to put on a show. We spent a full week soaking up the sun and didn't think very much about football. Each senior got a car, and there were enough ASU co-eds to show us the sights. No, we definitely didn't think very much about football. The media took up uh, some of our time every day trying to get us to say something inflammatory about our opponent, Arizona State. One reporter told me ASU's top receiver compared himself to me by saying it was like comparing a thoroughbred to a plow horse. That inflamed me all right. But years later, I'm happy to see the narrator in the highlight film got it right. After stalling on the 41, ASU putter Mark Jones launches a punt to fabulous 44. Jimmy Cephalo, the Penn State speed burner. Cephalo, running to daylight like a falling meteor, blasts off behind a wall of Nittany Lion blockers for 62 yards before finally being brought back to earth by the last ASU man, Jones the punter. By the way, John Jefferson, that ASU receiver, didn't catch a pass until the fourth quarter. That's when the old plow horse made another big play. That dynamite duo, Fusina and Cephalo, deliver the blow. Most everyone agrees is the devil killer. Fusina hits his favorite target for 13 and a crucial first down. We won the game 42 to 30. Yeah, the Fiesta Bowl was a good time especially for the old Penn State speed burner. Well, Jimmy, I understand you blazed quite a trail out here, both on and off the field. And, Mark, I can understand now why a football player can get sidetracked, get his mind off football with all the things to do out here in Arizona. Yes, this is kind of the yuppie capital of the Southwest. I lived here two years. And even though most people are probably more attached to their cars, there still is a very real flavor of the Old West. Let's go for a ride, and I'll talk about Arizona. Great. Sounds good. Come on, Come on. Tony, much of Arizona is still wilderness. The well-known beauty of the Grand Canyon, less than six hours from Phoenix. But there are 22 national park systems in the state, 11 million acres of national forest. Let me show you some of the best-known sites. The Rainbow Bridge. The Red Rocks of Sedona, a mecca for Hollywood stars and the rich. Flagstaff in the spring. The Superstition Mountains and the landmark known as Weaver's Needle. Monument Valley. There's nothing else like it in the world. And this land of Indian folklore is just a short drive from the Grand Canyon. All of that is a way of life for Arizonans. I don't think I've ever seen more variations of cactus in my life. Now, I was told that there's that one variation of cactus out here that if you touch it, all of the thorns jump right off and onto you. Yeah. From this city park, the largest park system in the country, you can look down and see Phoenix. 1.5 million people live in this metropolitan area. It's a city where hot air balloons are seen almost every day during the winter. Get off, take a look. Yeah, let's. While the Phoenix area has transportation problems more related to cars than horses and growing pains like any city in the Sun Belt, the ties to Mother Nature are strong. Now, see this mountain range over here? Yeah. You've heard of the Superstition Mountains and the Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine? Yes. That's it. 
somewhere out there. Do people still believe in that? A lot of people do. A lot of people go up there in the summertime and, and look for it. As a matter of fact, there are people that live up there full time and shoot you if you get too close. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. After this, this ride today, Mark, I'll tell you, the people from the Miami contingent up here with the University of Miami have had a great experience here in the, in the Phoenix area. And I know a lot of them have never been to Arizona, so that makes it just more special for them. I lived here two years, and it's still very special to me, even though you love South Florida and Miami is very special in your heart. A place like this kind of grows on you, too. I can see that. Yeah. I'll have some final thoughts right after this. We got trunks and tails. And paws. We got spots and stripes, muzzles and claws. We got antlers, horns, pouches and jaws. We got checks and rings. Yeah, we got all kinds of things. And now Metro Zoo's got wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All kinds of wings. Oh uh, yeah. Metro Zoo's got wings. We got all in UCLA against last year's national champions. The Miami Hurricanes, the Miami attack, led, of course, by Bernie Kosar, who threw for 25 touchdowns this year. He'll go against a Bruin defense, which is headed by linebacker Neil Delacono. You see him here on the sack, number 39. From Tempe, it's on to Pasadena. Yeah, we'll say it. It's the granddaddy of them all. The Rose Bowl, Ohio State against USC. The Buckeyes were 9-2 and two this year, thanks largely to Heisman runner-up Keith Byers, who led the nation with 1,655 yards and 24 touchdowns. USC features defense. Defensive All-Americans Dwayne Beckett and Jack Del Rio. Then it's on to the primetime pageantry of the Orange Bowl, where the national championship might be at stake, with Washington going against Oklahoma. Quarterback Danny Bradley keys the Sooners' wishbone attack. They're ranked number two in the country. Right behind them are the Huskies at 10-1, and, and running back Jacques Robinson is coming on strong at season's end. The Fiesta Rose and Orange Bowls coming up next on Bowl Day 85 on NBC. again everybody i'm bob costas and once more happy new year to you all from all of us at nbc we're going to waste no time beginning our triple header coverage the fiesta rose and orange bowls coming up we'll be back here throughout the day with scores and highlights but the kickoff at tempe arizona is seconds away so let's join charlie jones and bob greasy happy new year fellas this is the Valley of the Sun, and welcome to the 14th annual Fiesta Bowl Classic between the Miami Hurricanes and the UCLA Bruins. This is Charlie Jones and Bob Greasy, and it is a perfect day for football. The temperature in the low 70s, just a bit of a breeze. And Miami will be kicking off to UCLA, and so today, we start on NBC. Fun sun, and then the battle for number one, the Fiesta Bowl. Then. More sun in Pasadena in the Rose Bowl and then on to the Orange Bowl. But first things first, the Miami Hurricanes and the UCLA Bruins. Miami will be kicking off Mark Selig. Will kick off to either Gaston Green or Bob Garibaldi. And we're underway. Happy New Year, everybody. And here's the freshman Gaston Green to the 10. Get at the 15, down around the 16 or the 17-yard line. Selwyn Brown makes the tackle. And here is the quarterback for the Bruins, Steve Bono. Up front, he'll have Hartmeyer, Mannon, Barron, McCullough, and Love as an offensive line. Averages in around 250. Sherrard and Tennell as receivers. And joining him in the backfield, Wiley Green with Young outside, and we have an injured player down at the 20-yard line. And we believe it is Chris Cox. Yes, it is. Number 76. One of the offensive guards for the Bruins, and he, of course, playing on the specialty team. So let's go back to the lineups. Defensively, we'll see Cameron, Fagan, Morris, Brown, and Cortez. Fleming and Myra are the linebackers. Bain, Fullington, Sutton, and Calhoun in the secondary. Now, we'll also see Lucius Delegal for Bain. They'll be in and out, and Bain can swing at both corners. And here is Chris Cox, the redshirt freshman out of St. Louis, Missouri. Back it up, Bruins. Hey, everybody back. Everybody back, everybody back, back up, up. Quick. 
And so now we go to play. The ball at the 16-yard line. First down, UCLA, with Green and Wiley in the backfield. Play action, fake. Pass is complete at the 24-yard line. A gain of eight. It'll be second down and a couple. Mike Young on the receiving end. Charlie, some of the players we'll be looking at today on the left for the UCLA Bruins offensively. Mike Sherrard, their fine wide receiver. Duval Love, their second team All-American offensive lineman. Gaston Green for Miami. Kevin Fagan. Mike, uh, Bruce Fleming, their great linebacker, and Ken Calhoun, their strong safety. Second down and a couple to give is to Brian Wiley, the first back through. And Wiley goes to the 27-yard line. He'll pick up three in the first down. Bruce Fleming makes the tackle on the play. Bruce Fleming has really come in and played very well this year for the Hurricanes, replacing uh, some great linebackers that have come through the University of Miami in the last few years. The Bruins alternating Mike Sherrard and Al Wilson, wide receiver, as a messenger service from the bench. Steve Bono, the quarterback, 6'4", 210-pound senior from Norristown, Pennsylvania. On the option, the pitch is to Gaston Green. Green is shut off, Bob, as he tries to get around the corner, and he's pushed outside by Kevin Fagan. One of the outstanding players, number 95 for University of Miami, Kevin Fagan. He throws the offensive tackle out of the way, pursues down the line of scrimmage, and makes the tackle. Great play by Fagan. Second down and seven, following the gain of three yards on the play. No score, opening moments of the 14th annual Fiesta Bowl Classic. Bono rolling to his right. And is incomplete. 42-yard line, Mike Young, the intended receiver, will be third down and seven. Back at the 30-yard line, and Lucius Delegal at the defensive coverage. On the other side of the line, with one of the men we said we'd be looking at, Duval Love, a big offensive lineman, number 67 in white, blocks down on number 90, Morris, and then seals the inside as Bono makes the sprint to the outside. But this is one of the things we're going to be seeing from the University of uh, from UCLA is the sprint out and getting Bono outside the pocket to throw the football. Greg Francois checks into the backfield as Bono will operate from a shotgun. Third down and seven, and he drops it underneath the coverage and the pass is incomplete. He was going to Gaston Green. It'll be fourth down and seven at the 30-yard line. Julio Cortez of the Hurricanes was there. And that means that Kevin Bonafé, the number 15th ranked punter among the major colleges, and the senior from Tulare, California, will be kicking. And Eddie Brown, the All-America from Miami High School, the senior for the Hurricanes, will be set for the return. A little bit of a change to have Brown back returning punts, but it's one big ball game. The Hurricanes would very much like to win this game. They're pulling out all the stops. Not that good a kick. And we'll be down at about the 39-yard line. So we have no score. UCLA kicking to Miami, and we'll see the Hurricanes on offense for the first time in the ball game in the first of their quarterback, Bernie Kozar. Don't go up. Well, I think for UCLA, the motivation is this is the third time, the fourth time, actually, they've been on New Year's Day ball game, And they'd like to win three in a row, and I don't think any team has done that. For the University of Miami, they've lost their last two ball games of the season. They need to come back and win. It's going to help their offseason and their recruiting, obviously. And now we'll see Miami for the first time on offense. The quarterback is Bernie Kozar, number three ranked quarterback among the major colleges this year. And he can put the ball in the air. We have jumping as the left tackle, Paul Berticelli. So a little kind of a nervous start, I think, perhaps on both sides. I think you're right, Charlie. Anytime you have a game, exciting game, big game that you've been looking forward to a long time, you're going to have somebody a little nervous. All right, let's go to the offensive set for Bernie Kozar. His line will be Hefford and Ward, Sinclair Moore, and Berticelli, who just jumped off. They average in at around 260 pounds. Smith and Brown, two of the receivers, Shakespeare in the backfield, along with Daryl Oliver and Melvin Bratton. First down and 15. And here's Daryl Oliver. And he has to fight his way to the 35-yard line. A gain of a yard, it'll be second down and 14. Let's look at the defense for the UCLA Bruins. Randall Block and Whalen, the front three. 
And they will show four linebackers, Phillips, Taylor, Nose, and Delicano. In the secondary for UCLA, Welch, Washington, Price, and Pitts. And we'll also, of course, see Craig Rutledge. Second down and 14, no score in the ball game. And we still have 13 minutes left to go in the first quarter. We're two minutes into the 14th annual Fiesta Bowl Classic. Second and 14, we look for Kozar to put it in the air. And here he goes. He wants to set a screen, and there it is. It's complete to Bratton, and Bratton is to the 40. Bratton to the 43, the 44 yard line. So Bratton will pick up nine yards on the play. It'll be third down and five. And the free safety, the leading tackler for the Bruins, James Washington, is the man who brings him down. Been a lot of talk this week about stopping Bernie Kosar. I think a good play is a screen pass to start off with, as you see Bratton, number five, sneaking under. Moore, number 50, a personal protector out there. Bratton sees the hole and breaks off of Moore very well. So ball Miami operating at, at their own 44. The ball came out there at the end a little bit, Charlie. It did. Third down and five. Kozar running out of time on the 25 second clock looked up checked the clock said it's just not there and he calls for a timeout so an alert call by the quarterback Bernie Kozar we've got a timeout no score UCLA and Miami in 1982 Toyota introduced a standard bed truck for $59.98 and it was a winner Thus, for all of your insurance needs, ride with Kemper. And by Wang. Wang puts people in front of computers. This is Charlie Jones, Bob Greasy, no score. Between Miami and UCLA, third down and five for the Hurricanes. The ball on their own 44-yard line. You got it, baby! Here we go! Blitz is coming. Gozar is in trouble, and he is sacked. down and 15. Something a little bit different by UCLA. Number three, James Washington, the freshman, showing a safety blitz on the first possession pass of the ball game. Kosar has seen a lot coming into this ball game. Terry Donnie, who told us, I don't know if there's anything we can show him that he hasn't seen. I think they just showed him one thing right there. And Rick Tootin with a 41.6 yard average will be kicking to Ron Pitts. Pitts takes it at the 25-yard line. Picks up a block. He's to the 30, the 35, the 40. And returns to the 49-yard line. A 41-yard kick, a 23-yard return for the senior from Orchard Park, who has had knee surgery this year, did not play against USC, and had foot surgery this week. A lot of people ask, why do the punt returners always run to the sideline? Well, they run there to see all those white jerseys to set up the wall for them. You see Tootin, the punter, trying to make the tackle in vain, finally make the stop. But UCLA has got to play well on special teams to have a chance to win today. And the Bruins with a first down at their own 49-yard line. And the give is to Gaston Green. Goes to the 47-yard line of Miami. A gain of four. It'll be second down and six. And Darrell Fullington, the second leading tackler for the Miami Hurricanes, along with linebacker George Myra Jr., team up to make the tackle at the 47-yard line. Second down and six with Mike Young coming wide to the near side. Mike Sherrard wide to the far side. And here's Green. Freshman sensation for the Bruins. He goes to the 41. He has six yards. It will be close to the first down. Green, 134 yards rushing against USC in that ball game. He has been averaging 5.3 yards a carry. At Gardena High School in his senior year, he rushed for more than 1,200 yards, and he scored some 14 touchdowns. It's an outstanding back, Charlie, with uh, really great speed. You know, the two top rushers for each of these teams, Andrews and also Highsmith with the University of Miami, both out of the ball game, but they both have a lot of depth at that position. It is a first down for the Bruins at the Miami 41-yard line. 
Fake to Green. Bono to throw. He's going to keep it. And is bumped out of bounds at the 39-yard line. So he'll pick up a couple. It'll be second down and eight. And the rover back, Ken Calhoun, is the man who made the stop for Miami. Calhoun was a man that really, as a senior, strong safety, was injured earlier in the season. You see him getting a jam on the front receiver. He's playing the short zone. He is the man that was hurt, went out for three or four ball games, and really the University of Miami's secondary had some problems while he was out. He is the glue that holds that secondary together. They're very happy to have him back in the lineup. Earl Smith comes in, two tight ends on the set, and here's the quick pitch to Gaston Green. Green down the sideline, out of bounds, at about the 31-yard line. It will be close to the first down marker. Bruce Fleming was there for the Hurricanes. The Bruins going on a quick snap. And it's a good call, Charlie, early in the ball game to go on a quick count because the defense is not set. And what that will tell the defense is you better get set, and that will give an opportunity for the offensive quarterback to read the coverage a little bit quicker if the defense has to get set a lot quicker because of the fear of the quick, quick count. Sherrard comes back in. Paco Craig comes in. Third down and one. And the Bruins will pick up the first down. Bono does it. Two yards to the 29. First down for UCLA. Now they started this drive with their own 49, and the man who set it up was Ron Pitts with his punt return. Certainly did, and he was, uh, we were doubtful whether or not he was going to play. He had a little minor surgery on his foot, but there's Terry Donahue. And talking with Terry the other day, he was very, very weary coming into this ball game. He was very concerned about Miami and Kosar and their offense. And I'll talk a little bit more about that after this play. James Primus comes in at tailback. And Gaston Green comes out. Bono. Timing pattern down the sideline. It's there. Caught. Six-yard line. It'll be first down. And goal to go. Mike Sherrard, 26 yards on the play. Sherrard with uh, outstanding speed doesn't use it here. He just sees the ball. Fullington, number 19, does not see it. One foot inbound makes the catch. So the ball at the six-yard line. It will be first down and goal to go. Sherrard, the leading receiver for the Bruins, and in 22 straight games, he has caught at least two passes. He has one reception in this game. First down, goal to go. The Bruins with an opportunity to go out in front of the favorite Hurricane. Here's Gaston Green. He's got it. Gaston Green from six yards out, and UCLA goes on top with a 51-yard drive. Well, one of the things that Terry Donahue was afraid of coming into this ballgame was getting behind the high-powered offense of the University of Miami. Just a simple little toss, stretches the defense, Gaston Green, good quickness and speed, finds a little crack and gets up in there. But Donahue did not want to get behind where he had to play catch-up. He says his offense is not that type of offense. He doesn't have to worry about it here today. They get on the board first. John Lee to attempt the point after. David Clinton is the holder. And Terry Theodore with the snap. And it is good. A 51-yard drive in seven plays. It took a minute and 47. And UCLA is out in front of Miami by a score of seven to nothing. He's leading Miami by a score of seven to nothing, and Ken Potter will be kicking off for the Bruins. The deep back is Reggie Sutton, and off on the wings, Daryl Oliver and Steve Staffier for the Miami Hurricanes. Nine minutes and 14 seconds. Time remaining, first quarter. And the Hurricanes have had the ball in offense only one time, and the key to that was a sack by James Washington that shut down their offense. Three yards deep in the end zone, here's Reggie Sutton. Sutton makes the cut at the 15. A little juke step at the 17 to the 20. Has to get away from two more men. Around the corner. And he goes out of bounds. An excellent return. Excellent return by Reggie Sutton, the sophomore. And Ken Potter, the man who kicked off, is the man who stopped him a 37-yard return. Sutton has not returned a lot of kickoffs this year, but Jimmy Johnson wants to get all of his best people on the field, just as he put Eddie Brown back on kick on punt returns. Sutton, doing a great job, had some problems earlier in the year, just outrunning the entire UCLA kickoff team. 
Mark it at the Miami 38 yard line. First down. Here's Bratton. Bratton to the 40, the 45, and then bumped out of bounds at the 47 yard line. So he'll pick up nine. It'll be second down and one. Ron Pitts knocked him out. Let's look at the players that we'll be highlighting throughout the game. Some of the key players for Miami on the right Heffernan, the right tackle, and Sinclair. And then Willie Smith and Eddie Brown, they're two wide, two receivers that are really uh, playing well. On the other side, Tommy Taylor, James Washington, who made the sack, and then Neil Delicano, the other linebacker. Stanley Shakespeare goes wide to the right, and Eddie Brown is open to the left, second down and one. You look for the running back, probably Melvin Bratton on a short yardage, but let's see if it goes our We are jumping on the right side of the line, movement by Alvin Ward. Chris Block of UCLA immediately came across to make contact. Probably a false start against the Hurricanes. One thing that... Kosar, Charlie, will do at the line of scrimmage. Take a lot of time, look over the coverage, and we'll check off if he sees something he wants to check to. Not a lot of college quarterbacks will do that. Movement on the defensive line offside, UCLA. Pretty quiet. Referee Guy Gibbs, a little problem with the... Uh, the microphone not working, trying to read his lips. I tell you one thing, it was a dead ball foul. It was refused. Probably offsides uh, on UCLA. Couldn't have been offsides on UCLA. They would have refused it, but there were the offsetting penalties. Possibly that was it. Here's Kozar with time, wanting to go deep, scrambles out, he'll pick up the first down. He was looking deep and looking deep and looking deep. I don't think he ever looked short to see if anybody was open. He had, he had plenty of time to throw, Charlie. His offensive line. Take a look at 52, Dave Heffernan. You'll see why he gets so much time. They call themselves the Blitzbusters. Plenty of time to throw the ball. Good coverage downfield. Kosar hasn't scrambled very often and is not that good at it. And Tony Phillips of Santa Monica, the junior for the Bruins, makes the tackle. 49-yard line of UCLA. First down for Miami. Don't let those guys hold us all day. Kosar, complete right side. This is Shakespeare. He's got the first down and leans inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. Herb Welch makes the tackle, a gain of 15 yards on the play. Kosar to Shakespeare, the senior from Dayton Beach, from Boynton Beach. Along the 34-yard line, where it's first down and Shakespeare this year has not received the accolades as a receiver as has Eddie Brown an All-America and Willie Smith the tight end a second team All-America but with Shakespeare in there that means you can't double the other two men exactly right 34 yard line first down here's Oliver to the 20 has a block down the sideline he'll score Darrell Oliver 34 yards you got to give a lot of credit downfield to a great block by Eddie Brown, number 40. Good blocking up front to get him through, but you were talking about the explosiveness the University of Miami has. You're talking about their wide receivers in Shakespeare and Brown. They also have Oliver and Bratton in the backfield. That's why they are so explosive. Greg Cox with an opportunity to tie it up. It is good. Darrell Oliver, the sophomore, with the opening touchdown for the Hurricanes. Run into his left behind Berticelli and Moore. Sinclair with a good block. Watch the block by number 40 right there. Eddie Brown tying up Washington. Now he just a foot race to the end zone. We'll see it from the end zone. Nice big hole, good blocking at the point of attack. And then it's a foot race. Darrell Oliver says, I can take all these I can get. 62 yards of the drive. In four plays, we are tied at seven in the Fiesta Bowl. <laughs> and it's in two seconds left to go in the first period. We are tied at 7-7, UCLA in Miami. Darrell Oliver scoring from 34 yards away. Gaston Green, four-yard line. Green to the 10, the 15, has a hole, pops it. He's to the 30, returns to the 34-yard line. 
30 yards on the return by Gaston Green. Kenny Calhoun makes the tackle for Miami. So thus far, Bob, two explosive offensive clubs. Well, and, and also the special teams have been explosive, especially for UCLA returning the punt and then this kickoff, and Miami had a good kickoff return. I think it's a fact that they haven't been out here for two months playing that their special teams are, as far as the coverage is concerned, is a little bit weak. Here's Gaston Green. 36-yard line. He'll pick up a couple on the play. It'll be second down and eight. And number 45. Ken Calhoun and George Myra Jr. were there for the defense. Jimmy Johnson, the head coach of the University of Miami, Charlie, has got to be a little bit concerned about his defense. Overall, for the entire season, they played very well. The last two ball games against the University of Maryland and Boston College, they gave up 89 points. They're very concerned. It'll be interesting to see which defense shows up here today. Mike Young coming in for David Clinton as a receiver for the Bruins. Good play action fake by Bono has pressure. Open over the middle of the pass is complete to Mike Young. Young has the first down. Flags are down on the play. It goes to the 47-yard line of Miami. But there was one flag back at the 31, and another flag dropped at the Miami 47-yard line. A gain of 18 yards on the play should it stand up. Guy Gibbs, the referee, holding and face mask. Holding against the Bruins, a face mask against the Hurricanes. The 36-yard line was the line of scrimmage. So it's offsetting penalties. It'll be second down and eight, and we'll do it one more time. Willie Anderson checks into the offensive set for the UCLA Bruins as a wide receiver. Second down and eight. The Bruins using their wide receivers as a messenger service. Bono, quarterback draw, lost his footing. He slipped just a little on the quarterback draw, and that gave the defense time to converge. And it was Julio Cortez that made the tackle at the 34-yard line, a loss of two. Terry Donahue is saying that one of the keys to this ball game is this man right here, Steve Bono, has to play well. He's been injured part of the year when he has played. They have won seven of the eight games he has started. He just slips on the quarterback draw. Big, strong, agile quarterback. Pro scouts think he's got a future in the National Football League, but he has to have a good day for the Bruins to stay in the ball game. Third down and ten from the shotgun, Steve Bono. Pressure from the outside, steps away, has more pressure, and it's incomplete. He was trying to pin anybody, and he ended up throwing it to his right guard, Jim McCullough. You're looking for any color jersey at that point. He found the right jersey, but it had the wrong numbers, an ineligible receiver. The numbers were a little bit too high. Too high. <laughs> Double sevens might be fine for Red Grange, but not in this case. Well, here you see good protection. Now it's time. Now he says, I can't throw it over there. He's getting pressure. He sees that white jersey. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing is McCullough made a pretty good catch and then realized, wait a minute. And then he tried to shoo the ball away, like, get the ball away from him. Like it never happened. Yeah. It never happened. Yeah. Here's a look at Jim. Junior majoring in political science from Hemet, California. It'll be a loss of down on the penalty. And that means that Kevin Bonafé will be kicking. And Eddie Brown will be returning. And the Miami Hurricanes could have excellent field position. Bonafé with a 43.8 yard punting average. And very little wind to contend here today. Biggest thing is he's looking into the sun. Kicker, he gets a good one off. Fair catch is called for and taken at the 47-yard line of Miami. We have six minutes and three seconds left to go. We're in the first quarter of the Fiesta Bowl, the 14th edition, and we are tied 7-7. Goes 
our hands off to touchdown scoring Daryl Oliver and Oliver has three yards to the 50 yard line it'll be second down and seven Ron Butler makes the tackle for the UCLA Bruins he's in as an outside linebacker the senior from Greenville North Carolina Jerry Donahue was saying that what he needs to do is contain Bernie Kosar. They cannot get into a high-scoring match against this team. Their offense is not there. Their strength is in their kickers, John Lee, the All-American, and Bunafe. They hope to play field position, make Kosar go a long way, maybe make a mistake. Here's a good look at the eyes of a quarterback, Bernie Kosar. To Melvin Bratton. Bratton is cut off outside, makes a good spin, turn, but dropped to the 50-yard line. No gain, and David Randall, the senior from Dallas, Texas, brings him down. It'll be third down and seven, and that means that Kozar will be putting the ball in the air. Melvin Bratton came in and played late in the season after Highsmith uh, was hurt, Alonzo Highsmith, and really, it's going to be exciting for the University of Miami next year when they have both Highsmith and Bratton in the same backfield because two exciting runners for the University of Miami. And Bratton had 134 yards and four touchdowns in that classic game against Boston College. Third down and seven, 50-yard line. Kozar throwing, the blitz is coming, has the blocking, looping pass, it is incomplete. Shakespeare, the intended receiver, the problem was the sun. You can tell from the shadows that when he looked back, he was looking back directly into the sun, but a perfect pass by Koza. Exactly. The same blitz that they used the last time. Bernie says, I got to get out of here. No, my men picked it up. Now he puts the ball right on the money, as you said, and he's looking right back into the sun. Bernie thought he had it, and then it dropped the ball but looking back into the sun. The problem being, they used that same blitz again, UCLA did. This time they picked it up. Rick Tooten will be punting, and Ron Bitts is sent for the return. His father, the great Elijah Bitts, played, of course, for the Green Bay Packers. And Bitts with one excellent punt return to his credit in this ball game. Feels this one on the bounce, and he'll down it right at the 12-yard line. 38 yards on the kick. We're tied at 7-7 with 4.28 left to go in the first quarter. Here again is a look of Kozar to Shakespeare. The sun interferes. We'll be back in just a moment. Little bobble on the exchange, the handoff to Gaston Green, and he pops it for eight yards to the 20 yard line. It'll be second down and two. Ken Calhoun, the rover back, is the man who made the tackle for the Miami Hurricanes. Gaston Green, 5'11, 190 pound freshman, not a redshirt, regular freshman, 5.3 yard rushing average, 134 yards against USC. And he in, of course, because the injury to Danny Andrews. And he is a good one. Here's Brian Wiley, the fullback, going for the first down. Needed a couple of yards. May have picked up only one. Victor Morris with the tackle. And talking with Terry Donahue, he says he's got a couple other good running backs. Primus is one. And a fellow named Hall, they think they all three can be. They may go to the wishbone next year with all those running backs, Charlie. Gaston Green, seven carries, 34 yards, and the touchdown. 7-7 seven, seven tie here in the Fiesta Bowl. And then it's on to Dick and Merlin, the Rose Bowl. Don Cricky and the Trump in the Orange Bowl. Third down and one. Here is Green and the defense is there. May lose a yard. It'll be fourth down and two as Derwin Jones, a freshman from Northwest Christian High School in Miami, along with the junior Kevin Fagan from Lake Worth, the strongest man on the team of the Hurricanes, makes the stop, and that means that Kevin Bonafay will be kicking. Derwin Jones, number 86, an interesting story. Last year, as you said, Northwest Christian in Miami, which is a Class A school, playing against the likes of Class A def uh, offensive tackles. This year, he played against Fralick from Pittsburgh, and now he's playing against Duval Love, the second-team All-American for UCLA. Quite a jump in one year. Here's the kick. It's a beauty this time. Brown feels it, bobbles it, picks it up at the 33, steps away, has a block, another block to the 45, to the 50, needs two more blocks, has one, waits for the other one, he gets it, he scores.
Well, Jimmy Johnson said he wanted some more excitement in his returns. He put Sutton on the kickoff returns, and Eddie Brown, his first career punt return for a touchdown. 68 yards. And the Hurricanes out in front, and now Greg Cox will attempt the point after. Rick Tootin to hold. The Hurricanes a man short. Here he joins. Flags will be down as there will be a illegal procedure for the 11th man in motion. He was running towards the line of scrimmage when the ball was snapped. As Miami ended up with only 10 men on the field and the lone man. It'll be motion. Illegal motion on the play. <laughs> He's trying to get Miami. there in time, but he just couldn't quite make it. And ironically, if he would have stopped and had not been in motion. Well, obviously, something like that is inexcusable. These They go over these special teams so much, but you got to believe that the problem being they haven't played a game in two months, so some of these players, they haven't been in the routine. They practiced this week. Some of the time they practiced indoors because of, there was some rain uh, in the area, and, and they're just not as sharp as they normally would be at, uh, at the end of the season. We don't want to spread it around, but we believe it was number 87, Alfredo Roberts, but let's just keep that between us. Yeah. We don't want to embarrass him. Here's the long extra point attempt. And it's still good. So it is Miami 14, UCLA 7 on a 68-yard punt return by Eddie Brown. You're going to see Eddie Brown fumble the ball a little bit. This causes UCLA to relax just enough. Eddie Brown has the speed, gets a good block right there. Now, Myra, number 45, Reggie Sutton, for number one, gets a block. He's going to cut back right here off of Myra's block, and he's into the end zone. You know, Terry Donahue has enough problems with Kosar in their offense. He doesn't need their special teams to score any points. So Miami out in front by a score of 14 to 7. 218. That is the time remaining as we take a look across the Valley of the Sun. You know, it's it shot on the bench of the University of Miami players having a good time. Eddie Brown was there. Mel Bratton right next to him. Reminds me earlier in the week they've having a good time too at the Steak Fry, Charlie. They had an impromptu talent show, and Melvin got all of his buddies up on stage and they were all dancing. The only problem was Alonzo Highsmith, who has a brace on his leg from an operation, got up there too. Jimmy Johnson said, what are you doing up there? He says, I was only dancing from the waist up. So, yeah, just from the waist up. The kickoff sails through the end zone. Now, if it did not run to the end zone and carry through the end zone on the fly, that means the ball will come out to the 30-yard line and that will be the ruling. And UCLA will have the ball on their own 30-yard line first down. I think that's a rule, Charlie, that a lot of the colleges around the country are not very happy with because it really penalizes a kicker like Cox for kicking the ball well. And I think I think that's one of the things a lot of them want to take a look at in the offseason. In this case, Mark Seeley, who kicks off along with Cox, who does some of the kicking off, not that much, but extra points and field goal. Steve Bono has completed two of four for 33 yards passing for UCLA. The Bruins trail by seven from their own 30-yard line. A little play action fake. He goes deep, has the man open. It's Sherrard. Can he get there now? Mike Sherrard was behind the defender. And that was Reggie Sutton that he beat on the play. And Sherrard has been averaging 60.7 yards per reception. It's a good call. Great call by Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator. First down, play action. Bono has plenty of time. The ball is, well, we don't see it on that shot. The ball is just overthrown, but he needs to get some big completions early to get his confidence built up. Well, second down and 10, jumping by the defense, and then the... A telephone tackle, reach out and touch someone. <laughs> and the officials will sort it out. I think, the, the, really, Charlie, the reason for the sloppy play early in the game is because they haven't played a game in two months, and both teams have been inside uh, practicing indoors, I think, two or three times this week. They are just not sharp, as sharp as they should be at this and point. And add to that that it is the Fiesta Bowl, and so you're keyed up, and there's adrenaline is flowing, and, you, and it's not... Uh, well, they haven't hit anybody as, that's right. in, a, that's in a while. And now they're hitting and being hit at the same time. 
Dead ball foul encroachment. We'll move the ball to the 35 yard line. So it's second down and five at the 35. Mike Young goes wide to the far side. Derek Tunnell is the tight end on the right side. The Bruins with a two tight end set. Little play action fake off of a running formation. Incomplete should have been caught. Tunnell had it right in his arm. And he can turn on the speed in high school. He ran the quarter mile at a 49 2. Well, this has got to be very frustrating for Terry Donahue on the sideline and for Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator. Two good calls. The first down play, he had his man open, and the ball was overthrown. That time, on a second down play, a good call. He had his man open, the throw was there, and then the man drops. Somebody's got to make some plays for the Bruins. Third down and five. Miami leading 14-7. to seven. Knocked away. Good defensive play as Julio Cortez hit his arm, Bono's arm. The ball popped loose. Jerome Brown was trying to fall on it right there. Was it Jerome Brown that made the play? But the Bruins recovered it, and that means the kicking team will come in. But good defensive play by Miami. Let's take another look at it. It's an option play. He was going to go down the line, and right there the ball is knocked out. I couldn't see who knocked the ball out. But that was going to be the old option with uh, Bono down the line. It looked like to be number 92, what's been lost. Kevin Bonafay kicking to Eddie Brown, and Eddie Brown the last time he fielded a bunt with 68 yards for the touchdown to the upback of the game. And it pays off first down. Ryan Wiley, the upback. A pickup of at least 10 yards. The market to the 45. It goes for a gain of 10 and a first down. Gutsy call by Terry Donahue. Fourth down, deep in your own end zone, in your own territory from about the 35. Picks up a first down. I don't know if he was playing for the Rose Bowl Championship or for the Pac-10 Championship if he'd use this, but certainly... He's playing for the Fiesta Bowl title and he's doing fun. it. He's going to do it. Here's Gaston Gray. And he will lose a couple of yards on the play as Kevin Fagan makes the tackle. One of the players we said we'd be looking at today, Kevin Fagan, number 95. Hitting the best part of Hartmeyer. You'll see him right here. 63 is Hartmeyer trying to hook him. Fagan gets outside the block and makes the play. Just a junior. Should be one of the uh, leaders of that defense next year. They spot the ball at the 42-yard line, so it'll be second down and 13. Just over 30 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Bruins trail by seven. Play action fake by Bono. Has time. Good protection. Ricochet through the hands of the first receiver off of the chest of the second receiver and then almost intercepted by Ken Calhoun. It was Young, Francois, and Calhoun and an incomplete pass. One and of the not necessarily in that order. <laughs> One of the problems there was both receivers seemed to be in the same line of flight. As you'll see him hesitate, try to go ball goes over one receiver and right to the other. Now you tell me, Charlie, who he was throwing to, huh? Sherrard says he was throwing to Young. Young says he was throwing to Sherrard. But that's the problem when you have two receivers in the same line of flight. You need to spread them out across the field. Third down and 13. Pressure steps forward. Underneath the pass is complete to the 49-yard line of Miami, but it will still be about four yards shy of the first down. James Primus, the freshman from National City in the San Diego area, was on the receiving end, and John McVeigh of Columbus High School in Miami, along with Bruce Fleming from Western Pennsylvania, makes the tackle as the first quarter comes to a close, with Miami out in front of UCLA, 14-7 at the 14th annual Fiesta Bowl Classic Sun Devil Stadium, Tempe, Arizona. The Miami Hurricanes leading the UCLA Bruins 14 to seven. And Kevin Bonafay will be kicking to Eddie Brown. Brown, as you know, if you've been with us in the ball game, has a 68 yard punt return for a touchdown. Signals for a fair catch, looks in the sun and feels it at the 13 yard line. Good kick by the senior from Tulare. Kevin Bonafay, 35 yards, but he was just hanging it up and letting it come down at the 13. Bob, let's look at the statistics in the first quarter. Kosar and Miami have really not thrown the ball a lot. 
rather going with their running game to establish that. And I think UCLA has shown them a couple things they weren't ready for. I think maybe now they've adjusted a little bit. They went after them with some safety blitzes, did UCLA, and I think now they're more ready to, uh, to throw some uh, in the second quarter. Miami using the run to establish the pass, using the, use the pass to establish the pass. This one is complete. Going to the tight end, Willie Smith, and Smith pulls it down at the 22-yard line. It'll be a yard shy of the first down. It'll be second down and one. Tommy Taylor, freight train Taylor, the first man there, and the strong safety Craig Rutledge was the second man for the Bruins. Willie Smith, number 84, the tight end for the Hurricanes, one of the men that Bob will be highlighting in the game, a second-team All-America from Jacksonville. 66 receptions for 852 yards, tied for sixth in receiving among major colleges in the NCAA. Second down and one. And there is jumping by the Bruins. Flags are in the air, as is the pass, and it is complete to Stanley Shakespeare. Dennis Price with the tackle. Bernie Kosar checking off on the play, looking out to see the corner playing way off of Stanley Shakespeare, checked off to a little quick out. The long cadence and the inflection of his voice pulling off the UCLA Bruins. As he has set up, good, quick set up. Three, four, five steps, rolls a little bit away from the safety, number 49, that's uh, Phillips, the linebacker. Kosar just very intelligent. We have Kosar cameras today. He sees it. He can feel him coming. You feel the linebacker coming from the backside. You know, it's people ask me, how does a quarterback do that? You, you, just, you don't know. You can't see him, but you just feel like somebody's coming from that side. I think it's a sixth sense or something. Once you get hit by that guy a few times, your then, you're, works. then you know he's going to be coming, <laughs> and you, your sense works, I'll tell you. The penalty refused. They take the play to the 27-yard line in the first down. is to Bratton and Bratton is shut down at the 30 yard line he'll pick up three it'll be second down and seven David Randall the first man to get to him the second man was number 41 Ken Norton Jr. freshman from Westchester High School he was a running back in high school and of course in Los Angeles and his father the former heavyweight champion of the world second down and seven Terry Donahue was saying about Norton that he is really going to be a fine football player the running backs for Miami. Kozar has pressure, has to get rid of it, does to Brown. Brown makes a good move. Another one comes inside. 44-yard line, 14 yards on the play and a first down. Kozar had pressure, had to get rid of the ball, and Eddie Brown starts his moves almost before he catches the ball. Well, he's working on a freshman for number six price. Kozar checked off. When you saw the back move from the I formation out of it, he saw number six is price. Eddie Brown, a little quick out, and then his running ability picks up about 10 more yards. But the two wide receivers have man-to-man -man coverage. You'll see him playing off of him right there. And I suspect if they don't start doubling the two wide receivers, you're going to see a lot of catches by the wide receivers. Tommy Taylor makes the tackle. It is a first down at the Miami 44-yard line. Kozar on target into... Good defensive protection. Willie Smith, the tight end, caught it at the UCLA 49-yard line. A gain of seven. Tommy Taylor was there, along with Ron Pitts. But Taylor had good coverage, Charlie, but he just didn't see the ball coming. Willie Smith saw it and caught it. If Taylor would have seen it, he could have cut in front for the interception. Gain of seven. It'll be second down and three. Watch the eyes of Bernie Kozak. Looking to his left the entire time. Now, some patterns you can get away with that on, and others you can't. You see the tight coverage. He was kind of sliding over in case Taylor saw it and cut in front. Here's the draw. Bratton, good defensive play. No game. It'll be third down and three as Melvin Bratton is brought down by Chris Block, the nose guard, and Doug Wassel. The red-shirted freshman from Georgetown, Pennsylvania. Wassel now in for Mark Whalen. It'll be third down and three, and we'll have massive defensive substitutions for the Bruins. Basically, they're putting in 
their pass rush defense. Well, they made six substitutions, Charlie, and I don't think there's any way Bernie Kosar can sort all that out. But the one thing he does, if you can't sort it out and tell it intelligently, he'll just say, well, I'm just going to throw to the man that's open. And that's sometimes the best way to do it. The Bruins show blitz, four-man count. Kosar swing pass to Bratton. Bratton to the 50, cuts back. Picks up a couple of yards after being hit at the 47 to the 45-yard line. And that should be enough for the first down. The officials will stop the clock. They want to take a quick look, and then they may want to bring the chains out. Yes, they will. We have 11 minutes and 21 seconds left to go in the first half. Miami out in front of UCLA by a score of 14 to 7. UCLA scoring first on a 51-yard drive in seven plays. Gaston Green, the freshman, going in from six yards out. Miami countered with a 62-yard drive in four plays. Darrell Oliver scoring from long range, 34 yards away. But then the game breaker, Eddie Brown, a 68-yard punt return to put Miami on top by a score of 14 to 7. And as you see, it is a first down for the Hurricanes. Jimmy Johnson a little bit relieved that his team is out in front and, and back on uh, on the even keel. He was a little bit upset earlier in the week that his defense was not playing as well as it could. I think next year you're going to see a little bit of change. You're going to see more of Jimmy Johnson's defense in this Hurricane team. He came in late. He came in in June. Really didn't have an opportunity to put his philosophy into that defense. Just outside the Bruins 45 yard line first down. Gozar looking left, throwing left, tight end, Willie Smith catches it at the 44-yard line, and that's where they'll mark it. It'll be a gain of one, second, and nine. But Ron, Pence, uh, Ron Pitts, the senior from Orchard Park, was there. Good play. Good close-up look at uh, Bernie looking to his left the entire time. Double coverage on the outside. But I tell you, you got to be careful when you look because sometimes you can telegraph where you're going to throw the football. The corner on this play, Pitts, was doubling on the wide receiver. And when he saw the ball, he came up and made the hit. Miami started this drive back at their own 13-yard line. Now inside the Bruins 44. Kozar throws. Tight end Willie Smith again, this time a little high. And it's incomplete. Ron Butler, the outside linebacker on that side, picked him up third down and nine. And now six substitutions for the Bruins as they'll be looking defensively at a third and nine and Kozar throwing. Bernie setting up deep. Reads double coverage on the outside. His two wide receivers are double covered. That time he goes as tight end. But you can see good pass protection for Kosar. Visually, who does he remind you of in the pros as a throwing quarterback? Well, I don't know. I think he's got his own farm chart. I don't think he's real smooth. He just gets it done. Third down. Just over eight yards to go or just under nine. You can look at it either way. And uh, we've got flags and whistles. Gibbs is the referee, John Bradley the umpire, Phil Euler is the linesman, William Schmitz is the headlinesman, John Cobb the field judge, George Lloyd the back judge, and they're out of the WAC conference. Delay of game, violation of the 25 second clock. So it'll be third down and 13. Gorgeous day in the Valley of the Sun as NBC opens our bowl coverage with fun, sun in Pasadena, and then on to number one in the Orange Bowl. Here's Kozar. He wants to set deep. He does set deep and goes deep. There's coverage, though. Is it intercepted or caught? It's a touchdown. Brian Blades, 48 yards into all kinds of coverage. For the red shirt freshman from Fort Lauderdale, that is his first touchdown in college. You think he isn't happy about it? Bernie going over and congratulating him. Blades hasn't played a whole lot this year, Charlie. He's getting an opportunity to play in this ball game. And certainly next year, when the two wide receivers, Shakespeare and Brown, graduate, there'll be a lot of wide receivers wanting to get with this man right here. An 87-yard drive for Miami, a 48-yard touchdown pass. 
On the extra point attempt by Greg Cox, there are flags everywhere and whistle sounding. Flag on point. Illegal procedure against the offense. Good close look up at Kozar. This time looks to his right, and then he's moving the weak safety around with his looking to his right, then throws back to the left. Now look at Blades. He sees the ball all the way, and then takes it away from the other defender that comes over there late. Now the ruling on it, if it's a simultaneous catch such as this, it goes to the offense. Exactly. If it's a tie, the offense wins. Here is Cox to attempt the point after. And his extra points are, are exciting because they're all long. It is good. 21 to 7. Miami out in front of UCLA. Here's another look. Kind of labors getting back, but once he throws it, he gets free, but he's looking. He knows he's got a good chance of making a completion. Look at him looking all the way. Good things are coming. 87 yards on the drive in 10 plays. The touchdown pass to the freshman Brian Blades covered 48 yards. During the Hurricanes out in front of the UCLA Bruins by a score of 21 to 7. Mark Selig will be kicking off. Sophomore, 5'11", 183 pounds to either Gaston Green or Bob Garibaldi. And he sails this one. Garibaldi takes it at the one-yard line. Bob's father, also named Bob, was a pitcher with the San Francisco Giants. Return of 22 yards to the 23-yard line. So UCLA needs to generate some offense to get back in the ball game. Quarterback Steve Bono with Gaston Green, who scored the Bruins touchdown from six yards out. And Brian Wiley as the running backs. Basically, Mike Young and Mike Sherrard outside. Derek Tunnell, the tight end. We'll also see Al Wilson and Paco Craig in as wide receivers. David Clinton has been in as a wide receiver. Earl Smith is a tight end. Pass is complete, and it will pick up about four yards on the play. The senior, Mike Young, on the receiving end. And Ken Calhoun makes the tackle. To this point, Charlie, Steve Bono has been a little, seems to me to be a little unsettled. He is not moving around as smoothly as he would like. He, he seems to be feeling his way. I think he needs more confidence. And those types of short passes, even though they're short, their completions should help to settle him down. It goes for a gain of five to the 28, so it's second down and five. Here's Gaston Green, first up. He can do it. Look at the freshman fly. go in the first half. Number 67, Duval Love, the uh, second team All-American with a key block. You saw Gaston Green go right by him, and now we'll take another look. You just don't catch full length at 19. He's not going to catch that kind of speed. And Gaston Green has scored two touchdowns. He has rushed for 103 yards in 10 carries, averaging 10 yards a carry. We'll be back. Green with a new Fiesta Bowl record, 72 yards. And the touchdown, 21-14, Miami out in front of UCLA. And Ken Potter will be kicking off. Reggie Sutton is the deep back with Steve Staffier and Daryl Oliver off on the wings. 
Reggie Sutton, he will down it eight yards deep in the end zone. So Miami will go to work on their own 20-yard line first down. We mentioned that Gaston Green has the new Fiesta Bowl record, the record he breaks, 1980. Penn State, Ohio State, the old record was 64 yards. It's set for the great Kurt Warner, now with the Seattle Seahawks. Warner, by the way, well on his way to recovery from the knee problem that he had. And here's a look at the record. This is the new one. 72 yards. Gaston Green, the Bruins of UCLA. Only a freshman. <laughs> oh, he is going to be a superstar. A lot of excitement there for him in the next four years. Miami at their own 20-yard line. Miami leading by seven. Is 24, Warren Williams in for Daryl Oliver is the ball carrier for Miami. Neil Delacano, the first man there for the defense, and Dennis Price was the second. Let's mark the ball at the 24-yard line. It'll be second down in six. And, of course, from here, we'll be going on to the Rose Bowl and then to the Orange Bowl in Miami, what could be a game for number one. And NBC Sports with a telephone poll of the voters for Associated Press. They've got something interesting to convey about that ball game and the matchup. Here's Warren Williams again. Bob Costas at halftime. We'll be talking about that as Williams picks up three yards, and it'll be third down and about four. Lee Knowles and Chris Block make the stop. Bob, you're a member of the Orange Bowl committee. You feel that that's the battle for number one? Well, I think it's, it should be up to the writers and the people that vote for it, and I think that the survey that they're going to talk about at halftime is going to be very interesting. I know they pulled all of the writers that are going to vote, and it should be a very interesting halftime with Bob Costas. All of my friends at BYU, I for you, I for you. Okay, you were 13 at all. That's great. And the coaches poll, they're liable to vote for either. We could have a split. We'll just have to wait and see how it comes out. Willie Smith on the receiving end. Willie will pick up the first down. Bob Costas will be sorting all of this out at halftime. What it really means is that you can gather, as we'll look at Kuzar, you can gather four people on a street corner, and all of their alma maters can be number one. <laughs> no, we're not going to look at Bernie Kozar. It is a first down for Miami, and the high-powered Hurricane offense is underway once again. Moving from the 20 to the 32-yard line, still in their own territory, going into the sun. Very little win, a beautiful sun-drenched day here at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. Fun shot, and then number one on NBC, but right now it's Warren Williams as he goes to the 37-yard line, picks up five, second down five. Craig Rutledge, the strong safety, and James Washington, the free safety, make the tackle. But moving on the seven-minute mark time remaining in the first half. UCLA has really had a good year, Charlie, and I think the strength of their team has been not only their kicking game, but their defense with Delacono, number 39, and Tommy Taylor, 42. And as we say, they're the ones that really set the tempo for the game for the Bruins. Second down and five. The Miami magician, Bernie Kozar, the quarterback. Blitz from the outside. Dumps it off, saw the blitz and got rid of it, and completes the pass to Brian Blades. Blades with the glue fingers as he displayed on his touchdown reception. Ron Pitts for the defense. The thing about Kosar, he's not real graceful. He's not real foot, but he sees everything that's going on. He's a little herky-jerky getting back in his motion, but the results are there. a speed reader of defense, is it? Well, he's a, he's a candidate for a Rhodes Scholar. He's a 3.36 uh, on a 4.0, so not only does he have ability, but he's got the mind for it. Here's Bratton leaning for the first down. It'll be close. He had to get to the 42, and he is in that area. Ken Norton, Jr., along with Craig Rutledge were there for the UCLA Bruins. You talked about the grade point average academic All-American Bernie Kozar. You mentioned it, 3.36. Aptly so, his major is finance. You know, I like that. Business and finance. <laughs> and uh, if he elects to stay at the University of Miami for two more years, which he has said that he will, 
uh, and when he comes out and signs with the pros, I think that business and finance background will probably do him very well in his negotiations. Very competitive young man is highlighted at the end of the Boston College game when uh, Miami was going in for their last score. He wanted to play football. He wanted to run right at him. First down for Miami on their own 42-yard line. Miami leading UCLA by 7, 21 to 14. Kozar, both backs in the block, pass far side. Flag is down. The pass is complete, but there was a marker on the play. Stanley Shakespeare on the receiving end, and Ron Pitts was there along with Craig Rutledge for the Bruins. We'll go back now and check out the flag. It'll be against the Miami offense for illegal use of the hands. The Bruins showing an explosive offense of their own with Gaston Green scoring their two touchdowns from six yards and 72 yards away. And it's kind of unusual, and I know all the UCLA uh, alumni and fans will realize this, that we've not seen John Lee other than two extra points. We've played a quarter and a half. Normally, he's kicked two or three field goals by this point. I think they're very happy that they've got the two touchdowns instead of the two uh, field goals. John Lee setting an NCAA record of 29 field goals this last year, and he is a good one. Really a good one. Kozer wanted to set the screen, and the pass is dropped by Warren Williams. He was trying to set the screen. It was infiltrated for the Bruins. He was then scrambling. And then side on him to Williams, who couldn't hold on. To Infiltrated him. by number 78, Block, who followed the center out there. As we'll see, Kosar setting up. Now he's looking to his left. He says, it's all right that I'm going back. Now he can't get rid of the ball, throws it away. But Block, number 78, the nose tackle, followed the center out into the screen. Frank Bashkoff was also there. The sophomore from South Reseda. And you see the white jersey, number 78, out with all the orange ones. Second down and 15. Pressure coming from the outside by the Bruins defense. Kozar has to get rid of it. It'll be third down and 15. 37-yard line. Eddie Brown, the closest receiver. The Miami head coach, Jimmy Johnson, first year with the Hurricanes. The record is 8-4. and four. He was with Oklahoma State for five years. Captain at the University of Arkansas, the Razorbacks 1964 National Championship team, all Southwest Conference, as a nose guard. And the year before, he went both ways, offensive guard and as a defensive nose guard. That's before they made the rule changes. His nickname at the University of Arkansas was Smiley. <laughs> always, always with a smile. Third down, 15. Kozar steps forward all the time in the world. Deep coverage is good, drops it off to Bratton, and Bratton goes out of bounds at around the 47-yard line. Let's see where the official will mark it. He'll mark it at the 47, a gain of 10. It'll be fourth down and five, and that means that Rick Tooten will come in to, to kick for Miami. Herb Welch was there for the defense. You know, Charlie, you were talking about Jimmy Johnson. It's, it's been a tough job that he's done, and he said that, I don't know if I've ever had been a, through a season with so many highs and lows of the magnitude that we've had this year. They, they won the, the game, the kickoff classic against Auburn. They were the only team to beat the University of Florida. But then the tremendous losses at the end of the season, the emotional highs and lows. To Maryland and BC. Yes, it's been a tough year for them. David Clinton and Ron Pitts are back as the returners for UCLA. And fair catch is called for by David Clinton. Bernie Kozar of Miami said, when I went to college, I always wanted to play the best teams in the country, but I didn't want to play them four weeks in a row. We've got a timeout, and Miami leads by seven. We'll be back. First half of the 14th annual Fiesta Bowl Classic. Miami out in front of UCLA by seven, 21-14. Bruins have the ball. First down at their own 16-yard line. Bono stepping away from pressure. The pass is complete to Gaston Green, and Green is horse collar down the sideline, but stepped out at the 23-yard line. They're going to mark it, so it's a gain of seven. It'll be second down and three. Gaston Green with a six-yard and a 72-yard touchdown. I don't blame him. I'd get the ball to Green as much as I could. I'd hand it to him. I'd throw it to him. But a good call, first down play action. And talking with Donahue yesterday, he doesn't even get involved with the play-by-play -play calls, just the tempo of the game, run on first down and then throw someone first. 
Greg Francois comes in at fullback and Wiley comes out second down and three Francois the ball carrier and he just keeps churning but will come up a yard short of the first down he has two to the 25 Kevin Fagan with the tackle will be third down and one Terry Donahue head coach UCLA his record this year was eight and three they're making their second appearance here in the Fiesta Bowl back in 1978 they tied the University of Arkansas by a score of 10 10 look at this man he was a defensive tackle for the Bruins in the mid 60s I asked you about that at the ball the other night and he said we've upgraded our recruiting since then Third down and one. <laughs> we'll have to sort out the whole pile to see if they did pick up the first down. <laughs> Officials will stop the clock. <laughs> now the Bruins have gambled already in the ball game on fourth down. I mentioned that just in case they didn't pick it up here. And they did not pick it up here. And they gamble from punt formation. Fourth down. So it is fourth down in a yard. And Bonifay will be coming in supposedly to kick. Brian Wiley is the up back. He is there either as the blocking back or in case there would be a fake. They'll go with the kick. That footed kicker boots it away. Here's a good one. Stanley Shakespeare on the return. Giving ground. He's in trouble. And he'll be dropped at the 15-yard line. A 55-yard kick by Kevin Bonifay. A flag dropped on the play. We're going to have a late hit on uh, Josh Shinnick, number 32. You know, UCLA, Charlie, has a lot of father-son combinations uh, of uh, ex-professional uh, athletes. Josh Shinnick, the son of uh, Don Shinnick, who used to play for the Baltimore Colts. We've already talked about. They also her. played for the Bruins in college, yes. The Bruins and Ken Norton's son, who is uh, playing, and uh, George Myra Jr., of course, playing. George Myra was a great athlete, a great quarterback at the University of Miami, and all with the uh, play for the San Francisco 49ers. And we mentioned Ron Pitts, the son of Elijah, and also Kirk Alexander, the brother of Kermit Alexander. So a lot of friends and family involved on both teams. I like that Alexander matchup. He's got a brother and a the, son. The Kermit's son, so that means that an uncle and a nephew are on the <laughs> same team. That's right, because young Kelton Alexander is a member of the Bruins. We've got a timeout as we sort out. 14, Miami has the ball on their own eight-yard line, first down. Gozar, a little play action, has pressure from behind, dropped at the one-yard line. By Mark Whalen. Second sack of the ball game for the Broad. Whalen is probably at the top of your screen. Probably the best pass rusher on this team. Kosar waiting for his man to come off of the corner. And I want to tell you, that hurts. He didn't see him coming. There was no sixth sense about that uh, blind side. And this is where you really can feel it when you get hit from the blind side. Hmm. I'm surprised he didn't cough up the football. Close to being a safety or a fumble and a touchdown. Kosar rolling right, throwing. Willie Smith juggled incomplete. Tight end. Intended receiver Greg Rutledge was the first man there. James Washington was the second man there for the Bruins. It'll be third down and 17 back at the Miami one yard line. And the Bruins, after being down in the ballgame by 14 points, are right back in it. Kosar, not last five years they've had an All American center. Keys at Kenny easily had that position, was All American for three years. And then Don Rogers had it for two years, All American. James Washington, a good athlete. Gozar with pressure throws it complete. And the pressure was put on by Neil Delacano. And the vocal Bruins in the crowd here, just an hour's flight away from Los Angeles. 
Cano with nine sacks coming into the ball game. He, is, he makes the big plays for him. He's a third-team All-American, one of the players that has to play well for that defense if they're going to get some, some things done. Rick Tootin now right at the back edge of the end zone. He cannot step back. It'll be a safety. Low kick with the pressure. It will be a safety. this game has changed with that last series that the UCLA defense just pushing back the Miami offense and then actually pushing him out of the end zone as we'll see the snap right here you can't tell from that shot whether he stepped on the line but there wasn't much blocking up front for two Allen Dial among the many Bruins putting the pressure <laughs> Like calling opening the doors. You can have this job. I don't want to putt. Scott Franklin was also there for UCLA. You think those putters have easy jobs? Kelson Alexander, who you're talking about. Yeah. Everybody else was there too for the white jerseys. So it is a 21 to 16 ball game. Miami still leads and they have a free kick opportunity here with David Clinton and Ron Pitt set to return. And Rick Tutin will be punting and he'll be punting from the 20 yard line. Not that good a kick. To the 40 yard line on the return. 19 is David Clinton. And UCLA with excellent field position. Kenny Blades with the tackle. The Bruins are on the move and we'll be back. The junior from Columbia, Missouri, officially credited with the safety for the Bruins. And UCLA now has the ball on the Miami 47-yard line. Here's Gaston Green. And he'll pick up a yard to the 46. It'll be second down and nine as Jerome Brown upended him. Later in today's game, Bob Greasy and I will be selecting the outstanding player of the game from each team. And we'll be making an announcement at the end of the game, and Toyota will donate a total of $1,000 to each of the school's general scholarship funds. Here's Bunoff with pressure. Here's Green. Green to the 40. Green to the 35. Green to the 32-yard line. 14 yards and a first down. Lucius Delegal with the tackle. It's good heads up play by Bono. He had nobody downfield opened up. Instead of losing his composure, he steps aside, finds Green, and then he avoids some, some tacklers and gets a nice game. The ball just outside. The 32-yard line. There's the time remaining. Minute 52 and counting. Bono's pass is incomplete. I think a little mix-up. I believe he was going to Tunnell, and I am not sure that Tunnell realized it. But it'll be second down and 10. Officially, they mark at the 33-yard line. Tunnell's only caught 20 passes this year. They don't throw a lot to him, and they had one of the wide receivers right behind him, and I think he could say, well, I want to stay out of the way. Gaston Green on the sidelines. There you go, right there. I think he thought that Mike Young, number 18, is for whom the pass was intended from the bell tolls. Was throwing it to the tight end, Tunnell. Oh, no, pressure from behind. Come back screen, Tunnell. Good defensive play by Miami. Bruce Fleming makes the tackle. <laughs> And as far as Bono is concerned, that's one completion he'd rather just not have had because after he throws this ball, he gets decked. Rolls one way, a little screen back the other way. Don't you like to look around and say, ooh, wait a minute. This is not, this is not the way we run it in practice. 
We've got a timeout on the field with a minute 35. Left on Bob Greasy, minute 35 to go in the first half in the Fiesta Bowl. Miami leading by five, 21 to 16. UCLA third down and 11. Bono going deep into coverage, and it is incomplete. Mike Sherrard, the intended receiver. It will be fourth down and 11. And John Lee is coming in with a field goal attempt. From the 41-yard line, we'll go back to the battle and into the field goal attempt. Willie Lee Broughton, number 80, fighting off of McCullough, number 77, puts the pressure right there. If he had a little bit more time, I think he could have had the completion because he needed to wait just a second longer to leave the receiver get open. Leading kick score in the NCAA with 104 points. His longest this year, 51 yards. This is a 51-yard attempt. His career long is 52. Will it carry? It does! kicker we said a little earlier Charlie we're a little surprised we haven't seen him up to this point they scored 16 points and only two of those the extra points were any of his that's a little bit unusual as we'll take another look and then, uh, with the confidence he walks <laughs> he knew he had it he's all only missed one. four all year and uh, that man is one one good kicker we'll be back Ernie Kosar, quarterback the Miami Hurricanes to the national championship last year. He's an expert when it comes to winning when the odds are against him. Winning the national championship last season was a sensation that I'll never forget. The high experience was a feeling I wish everyone could feel. It gave me that so-called perfect feeling of euphoria, self-pride, and confidence in myself. Give sports a chance. I think it'll be worth your while. Get high on sports, not drugs. The preceding message was furnished by the Fiesta Bowl and the NCAA. John Lee with a 51-yard successful field goal. Ken Potter to kick off. The deep back is Reggie Sutton. And Sutton from five yards deep is going to run it out. Hit at the 13, bounces away. He's to the 20 and returns to the 24-yard line. On the tackle, number 32, Josh. Herb Welsh is the man who made the stop, along with Josh Shinnick. There is another look. It just barely clears. Let's see if we can... Oh, just <laughs> oh, barely. Just barely. He gets the ball so high, it comes down. But, you know, going back to that last series, the University of Miami offense, UCLA's defense pushing him out of the end zone, the block punt, uh, two points on the safety to force the punt. Then they get a field goal out of it. So it, as it turns out, it's a five-point play for the UCLA defense coming back strong. 21 to 19, Miami leads, and UCLA is clawing their way back. Here's Kozar. Pressure from behind. Heads for the sidelines, and he makes it. Eventually. He is not that quick, is it? Bernie does not have a lot of foot speed by his own ad admittance. Uh, he is not the uh, most agile uh, quarterback. He wants to work on this in the offseason. He is looking around. Now, his, his forte is his mind and his arm. He just wants to get out. There was nobody to throw the football to. Terry Toomey, freshman, uh, redshirt freshman from Tulsa. There's a man chasing him out. Second down. Just under 10 to go. May have gained half a yard on the play. Kozar. Incomplete. In and oh, it's intercepted. It's picked off in the air. The Bruins have the ball. James Washington taking the care of. Rutledge made the play, and Washington with the interception. 27 yards. One of the key players we noted at the top of the game for the for the UCLA Bruin defense has four interceptions on the year. That makes his fifth. But a big play by the freshman filling in some big shoes 
from the uh, past years for UCLA. Gostar throwing a tough pass. Now the ball is there, but it's a tough pass to catch for Smith because anything in the air that long, you're going to get hit as soon as you're catching it. Good tip reaction drill by James Washington. What's the hit of Rutledge? Pow, the ball's in the air, and Washington picks it up. 18-yard line. Here come the roar. James Primus gets the call. Time remaining in the first half, 48 and counting, and Bruins will stop the clock. A gain of a couple of yards on the last play. When we come back, it'll be back to play. It'll be second and eight with 48 seconds left. Let's go back for a moment to that 51-yard successful field goal by John Lee. Lee this year, 16 of 16 inside of 40 yards. He hit 29 of 33. You mentioned that he missed only four. A native of Seoul, South Korea, the site of the 1988 Olympic Games. Played his high school ball in Downey. Also a baseball player and a soccer player. A All-America selection, 5'10 and 3 quarter inches, 175-pound junior. One more year of kicking. He could be a first-round draft Oh, there's no question. He'd be a first-round this year. And a big fan of Rafael Septien, the uh, kicker for the Dallas Cowboys. He, uh, he really likes the way he kicks. He says, I like his consistency. And he had a phone conversation a few weeks ago. And uh, this man is going to be uh, a very good kicker for a long time. And we have a report from the Cotton Bowl game that Boston College and Doug Flutie way out in front of Houston by a score of 31 to 7. Here it's 21-19, UCLA trailing and threatening. Bono into the end zone. It is incomplete. He was going to Sherrard. That will stop the clock now with 44 seconds. Third down and eight. Daryl Fullington and Reggie Sutton had the double coverage. And now let's be realistic. The Miami defense has been a bit porous the last game and a half of the season. 80, uh, 89 points were scored against him offensively. During that same period, they scored 85 points. Well, of course, the offense has put him in this problem the last half of this quarter with not John Lee and the lead at halftime. Tipped, it is incomplete. The kicker, the threesome, the point-producing trio of the Bruins. It is good. 21 with 36 seconds left. And they're doing it with their strength. They're doing it with their kicking game and their defense. Let's take another look. He kicks this ball. 22-21, 36 seconds left in the first half. Bob? The last two ball games the University of Miami has played, the, the score has been in the 40s uh, for both teams. Uh, it looks like we may have something like that today. I don't think Terry Donahue thought that. I talked to him yesterday. He said for us to have a chance to win, the score has got to be something like 21 to 17, 21 16. It's already 22 21, Terry, and you're ahead. So you've scored more points than you thought you would. Ken Potter kicking off. This will sail through. Sure. They'll give him a lot of competition. But BYU is 13 and 0. That should even make it more exciting. Tipped it is incomplete, almost intercepted. Only one of his last eight passes that is completed to his own players. He had one picked up. Kozar scrambling, and then he goes down. 48-yard touchdown pass from Kozar. Then Gaston Green, a Fiesta Bowl record, a 72-yard touchdown. UCLA's defense is safety. Josh Shinnick is the man who received credit. Then John Lee with a pair of field goals at 51 and 33 yards. What it adds up to is a total of 43 points, 22 for UCLA, 21 for Miami. Mentioned the last two University of Miami games in the 40s. They lost to Maryland 42 to 40 when they were ahead 31 to nothing at halftime. That about drove Jimmy Johnson crazy. <laughs> yes. But then the final one, Boston College, 47. Allen for UCLA too. They were selected by some to be the speaking of number one preseason to be the number one team in the country. Kozar throws it in his pits diving for it. They say no, he trapped it. Back him at least you're making him move around. They're forcing him out of the pocket, forcing him to throw on the run. A good look here at what he is seeing in the secondary. Three deep to the right of your screen. Now nobody is open. 
He's trying to get it to the man right on the symbol, the Fiesta Bowl symbol in the middle of the sun, and he just doesn't get it high enough because he was moving around. So Rick Tootin now will be kicking to Ron Pitts. Ten seconds left to go in the first half. Pressure, and he gets it away. And the ball just rolls free. It'll be down around the 29-yard line as officially the first half comes to a close. Oliver returns to the 10, has a little opening, cuts back at the 20, flag is down, and Oliver is down at the 24-yard line. So the first thing we'll have to do is to sort out the flag as we open the second half with the Bruins on top just by a point. Ball will be placed down on the 24-yard line. First down, Murphy. Holding against the return team, that is Miami. And the ball is going to be marked. They started to mark it back at the 11-yard line. And let's see where they do face it off to. We were watching the markers on the far side, and that's what it'll be. Guy Gibbs of the WAC Conference. Officially, they spotted at the 12-yard line. So here we go on the first play from scrimmage in the second half with Bernie Kozar, the sophomore quarterback, Boardman, Ohio. Third team, second team All-America quarterback. And here is Oliver, and he is cut down at the 11-yard line. So Darrell will lose a yard. It'll be second down and 11. Tackle by number 85. 85. Lee Knowles, the senior from Huntington Beach, was there. And you met, you alluded to the fact that uh, defensively, or the defense has to be the key for UCLA. And it certainly has been. It certainly was in the first half. They've got good field position. They got them backed up. Now, if, if, if they can force University of Miami to take some time and spend some yards and then turn the ball over, keep them out of the end zone, that's what they want to do. Second and 11, you look for Kozar to throw here. He keeps one back in, has a blitz from the other side, gets the pass off, it's complete to Brian Blades. Now Blades, the freshman redshirt from Fort Lauderdale, Texas, has already scored a touchdown. Blades coming into the ball game had only three receptions this year for 50 yards. And in this game, he has three for 60 and a touchdown. Fort Lauderdale, Florida, you're talking about. Yes. You said Fort Lauderdale, Texas. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know they had a Fort Lauderdale in Texas. No, they don't. I would just... Blades is in there out. for Eddie Brown. I, Eddie Brown is not in there starting the second half. We'll have to check and see if he's injured. Third down and one. First down, Darrell Oliver. And Oliver drags a Bruin across the 35 to the 36, maybe the 37-yard line that was James Washington. And a key block by number 72, Alvin Ward, the right guard. You'll see him pulling out. Number 72 makes the block on the linebacker right there. Big hole. Oliver doing some good running. James Washington, number three, with the tackle. Washington has been all over the field, the best athlete in that secondary. A gain of 16 yards to the 37-yard line. And it's a first down for Miami on their own 37. We're in the opening drive of the second half. Miami trails by 122-21. Here's Bratton. Bratton, a quick opener to the right side, spins his way across the 45. He has, uh, they'll spot it right at the 45-yard line. A gain of eight, Lee Knowles with the tackle, so it'll be second down and a couple. So Miami seems, at least in the opening of the second half, to mix it up rather than coming out just trying to get it all back through the air. Well, they've got a good running game, Charlie. Bratton and Oliver, both good runners at offensive line, most of them fifth-year seniors, only one sophomore, and that's Berticelli on the line. So they want to come out and run. They can run and throw. Oliver, five carries, 54 yards, and a touchdown. And here's Kozak. And he drills it. Pass is complete to the tight end, Willie Smith. Leans across the 45 to the 44-yard line of UCLA. And Lee Knowles, again, the senior from Huntington Beach. And one of the co-captains for the Bruins makes the tackle. 
Willie Smith, number 84, what a great year he had. Broke all the records that were set last year by Glenn Dennison, who is now with the New York Jets. But Smith just said that I couldn't, couldn't imagine this having this kind of a year, this good a year. He says everything that, that went went right for him. He was injured in one ball game and still caught 66 passes. 20-year-old sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. First down at the Bruins 44-yard line. And here's Melvin Bratton. Bratton goes out of bounds at the 40. So he'll pick up four. It'll be second down and six. An injury report on Eddie Brown. He got speared in the first half. And so uh, there he is on the sideline. We do not know whether or not he can return. But we also noticed that he was not back on punt returns. Yeah. He seems to be semi-healthy. So perhaps we will see him again. I hope so. He's a good athlete. He didn't catch a ball in the first half, but he did get his hands on it long enough to run back a punt return for a touchdown, and he seems to be in pretty good spirits. 68 yards on the touchdown ramble. They spotted at the 39, so it's second down and five. UCLA 22, Miami 21, opening drive of the second half. And here is Brant leaning close to the 35. They'll spot at the 36, a gain of three. So it'll be third down and still a couple to go. You know, Charlie, that offensive line that they're running behind was kind of interesting. Early in the week, they were talking about the award for the international goodwill and brotherhood that they had all kinds of people on that offensive line. You had an Italian at left tackle, a Cuban at left guard, a Canadian at center, a black from Chicago at right guard, and an Irishman at right tackle. They said if they took away their green cards, they'd be in tough shape. <laughs> Third down and a couple to go. Kozar tries to pick it up. And it looks as if he may have done it. He does. Lee Knowles again in on the tackle for the Bruins. And, of course, Bernie Kozar, the man they're all blocking for, is a Catholic of Czech. Czechoslovakian descent. Extraction, that's true. From Boardman, Ohio. UCLA 34-yard line. I think we're checking everybody's passports and, <laughs> and family trees today. Yes. Pass is complete. Tight end. Willie Smith. Smith. Right at the 24-yard line near the first down. Maybe about a half a step shy of the first down. Tommy Taylor, the second leading tackler for the Bruins, is the man who brought him down. Good shot from the defense. Looking right. If you're a linebacker, this is what you see of Kosar. Smith getting right between Tommy Taylor and Knowles and hooking right in the middle of the field. Willie Smith, five receptions. He's picked up 30 yards receiving. And it is second down and a yard to go. Kozar throwing on second down into the end zone, into coverage. It is knocked away and incomplete. Good coverage by Herb Welch. Good catch just out of the back of the end zone. I think that was just a, a, a throw where Bernie Kosar thought that his man could go up and out jump Welsh for the ball because he was not open. Uh, it was good we, were one, we were wondering if Eddie Brown would return. Well, he was the intended receiver on that play, so he is back and all right. There it is. Good play, but you're out of the end zone, so the interception doesn't count. Still a good defensive play. Third down and one. The Hurricanes now with three tight ends. And here is Bratton, the great leg strength to the 21-yard line, and he'll pick up the first down. Mark Whalen at the bottom of the stack, the junior from Burlingame. Mark Whalen, number 39. Good blocking on the right side again by Alvin Ward and Heffernan. We got four yards on the play. So Miami really mixing it up on this drive, and they're very patient. It's almost as if they 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 went into the locker room at halftime, I believe, in shock, and they say, "That's this is nonsense. We've got a good offense. Let's go out, take the ball, and march it down the field." And to this point, they've got a very good drive going. Melvin Bratton now nine carries, 35 yards rushing. First down at the UCLA 21-yard line. Here's Kozar. He's looping it out to Shakespeare. Shakespeare fumbles and reaches out and pulls it back in. Stanley almost let it get away from him at the 20-yard line. Ron Pitts was there for the Bruins. It'll go for one, second down and nine. Let's take another look. Here's a blitz, number 42, Taylor coming 
Kosar sees it and has to get rid of the ball a little bit quick. The ball is live. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Let yes, me get yes, out yes. here and get this back in here. Stanley, hold on to that ball, and those linebackers won't come and hit you when you're on the ground. Second down and nine. UCLA leading 22-21. Just over nine minutes to go in the third quarter. The pass is low and incomplete. Now exactly nine minutes to go in the third. And that means that Miami has controlled the ball for six minutes. And they have a third down and nine at the 20-yard line. And looking down the road just a step or two, the freshman field goal kicker from Fort Lauderdale, Greg Cox, hit 14 of 17. This last season is long being 48 yards. They're well within his range. Jimmy Johnson pondering. He's not smiling now. I think that nickname for a head coach of Smiley would count only during the week. And not, <laughs> of course, we're during the week now, so it should be all right. Kozar fires pass is pulled down by Bratton at the 14-yard line. It will be short of the first down as Herb Welch was there for UCLA. And Greg Cox will come in. Rick Tootin will be holding. And the snapper will be Bruce Fleming on a field goal attempt. This is to take the lead. And he'll be kicking from the 21-yard line. That'll be 31 yards away. So a 31-yard field goal attempt by Greg Cox of the Hurricanes is up. And it is good. So Cox hits from 31 yards out, and Miami is back in front this time by two. They lead 24 to 22. We'll be back with the kickoff. Okay. And handled by one of the upbacks. And then picked up by number 45, Marcus Greenwood. Remember the specialty team, Ken Calhoun, making the tackle. But again, the special teams coming through for UCLA as they have the ball on their own 34-yard line. Both sides, Charlie, have had good returns on their kickoff and punts. It seems like the coverage teams on both sides are out to lunch today. The last drive by Miami, 75 yards in 15 plays. It took almost seven minutes off of the clock and ended with a 31-yard field goal. Bono comes out throwing for the Bruins. Has a man open, and he hits him at Sherrard. 46-yard line of Miami and a first down. A gain of 20 on the play. Bruce Fleming with the tackle. It's a good play to start the second half with eye formation, play action. Bono's going to set up. Strong arm throws the ball outside. Sherrard gives him a lot of room to throw the ball to. They'll spot it at the Miami 47-yard line. Now the offense of the Bruins has been sitting on the sideline in the locker room for the half and then for almost seven minutes on the sideline. Does that have an effect? Well, I think they feel like the defense has done a lot for us. Let's go out and help them out and do something for ourselves. And here's Gaster Green with a move to the outside. First down, out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Gain of 16 for Gaster Green. With a 72 yard and a six yard touchdown ramble. Much the blocking to the left side here. We'll see we the hook there by Hartmeyer. Blocking in the secondary on Calhoun misses. Fullington just with his great speed comes across and gets the man down. 120 yards in a little over a half is a good day. That's an understatement. Good day. <laughs> a good day. Good I meant it to be an understatement. It was is to the first back through and that is Brian Wiley a senior from Harbor City Darrell Fullington with the tackle they'll spot the ball at the 20-yard line so Wiley picks up a quick 11 yards the Bruins have run three plays they picked up a first down on every play they started their own 34-yard line they have moved to the 20-yard line of Miami and right now UCLA has the spark in the ball game in the ball game And you can tell they were going to come. The defensive backs were up close, and everybody gets a little bit more excited. The linebackers, the defensive line, everybody's just a little bit antsy. Dead ball foul, and it is against Miami. 
that will move the ball down near the 15 yard line. It'll be first down and five. In penalties, UCLA has been penalized only one time for five yards. That is the ninth penalty against Miami for a total of 53. Let's see if they come on the blitz, Charlie. It looks like safeties are inside. Might be a good time to throw outside to the wide receivers. First down and five, good throw it down. Bono taking a lot of time. He gives to Green. Green runs into a stack and then just slides off into the left side to the 12 yard line. Picks up three yards. They weren't there. Bruce Fleming with the tackle. We saw a shot of Jimmy Johnson a little earlier before that play and sitting there and watching his defense. He's first down, first down, first down in three plays. His attack at Oklahoma State, where he came from last year, and he was the defense, the top defensive guy. He has always liked to be an aggressive style of defense. He is not one to sit back and rush with three. He wants to get after it. And I think you're going to see a lot more aggressive defense here in the second half and next year from the University of Miami. Francois in is the blocking back leading Green. Green to the eight-yard line. And he will pick up the first down. It'll be first down and goal to go for UCLA. They'll stop the clock to move the chain. 6.30. That is the time remaining in the third quarter. The Bruins are down by two, 24-22. And Gaston Green now, 14 carries, 127 yards. And two touchdowns, one of six and one of 72 yards. And a lot of his yardage, Charlie, has been to their right behind their second-team All-American right tackle, Duval Love. And what a load he is. I think if I had an All-American over there, I'd run behind him, too. Francois, like John Lee, is also a native of Seoul, Korea. Now we're back to play. Here's Gaston Green. He'll lose a yard. Three second down goal to go at about the nine. Kevin Fagan, the strongest player on the Miami Hurricanes. We mentioned that in the first half. It's worth mentioning again, particularly in this type of a situation where it becomes strength against strength. The market for a loss of two to the 10-yard line, second down goal to go. And, of course, UCLA already has... You can bank on the three points for John <laughs> Lee. Now, does he want... That may have been their problem part of the year, Charlie. When they get down there, they get too conservative. I don't think that's going to be the case here today. Oh, no looking left. And throwing has the man open. Hits a touchdown. Mike Sherrard, the junior from Chico, 10 yards. So now for 23 straight games, Mike Sherrard has caught at least two passes. This last one being a touchdown. And UCLA is back and run a drive that started back at their own 34-yard line. Bono to Sherrard. John Lee, rather than going for the three-pointer, he'll be adding the extra point. A 66-yard touchdown drive, and he does it. And that makes it UCLA 29 and Miami 24. Here's another look at the touchdown pass. Bono, with good protection, throws the ball over all the traffic, the orange jerseys, good completion, touchdown. Reggie Sutton will down it in the end zone for Miami. So let's go back now for a moment to the touchdown connection between Bono and Sherrard. The top of your screen, watch Delegao, number 16 on the outside. He comes in, and the inside receiver breaks to the outside. A miscommunication in the secondary. We'll be back in just a moment. It's 17 of 28, 167 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. And Miami trails 29-24. Hurricanes from their own 20-yard line. Play action. Wants to set a screen. There it is. Melvin Bratton. Bratton to the 25. Boy, he has to fight for every yard, and he picks up a couple more to the 27, maybe the 28-yard line, and there was a flag dropped on the play. Craig Rutledge, the strong safety, is the man who made the tackle on 
Redshirt freshman Melvin Bratton from Northwestern High School in Miami, 6'2", 205, a face mask against the defense. That is only the second penalty by the UCLA Bruins. I think I think a team's penalty, the amount of penalties, goes right back to their head coach, Charlie. And this team, Terry Donahue, the head coach, is well disciplined. He doesn't allow that to go on in practice. He doesn't allow it in the ball games. And I think the lack of penalties against UCLA is a tribute to that man right there. Winning the last two Rose Bowls. And in 1981, they lost in the Blue Bonnet Bowl. So here in the Fiesta Bowl, they're trying to make it three bowl wins in a row. For the Bruins, pass complete to Willie Smith, the tight end. The line of scrimmage at 33. He goes down at the 39, gain of six, second down four. And Dennis Price was the first man there. Ron Butler, the second for UCLA. Clock is stopped with 5-11. That is the time remaining in the third. Of course, after we finish the action here in the Fiesta Bowl, we'll be on to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena and then to the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida. So just enjoy the start of the new year, 1985. The big thing today is, the question today is tomorrow, do you write the right date on your check? And we'll be writing 84 for the next couple of weeks. Second down and four at the Miami 39-yard line. Here's Daryl Oliver. Oliver is cut off outside. Good defensive play. He'll lose a yard. It'll be third down and five is Tommy Taylor from Chattanooga, Tennessee, the junior. An all Pac-10 selection, first team for the Bruins, and he makes the tackle. All remains on the. No, they're going to see no 39-yard line. So it's third down and four. No gain on the play. What a good player that man is right there. And, of course, he's going against the top top offense. Both offenses today playing well. Great day for an offense. Lots of sunshine. Grass field. You good like footing. That. You oh, like you a you grass love field and good footing. Sure. Goes on. Pressure. Bratton pulls it down. In trouble. And he is dropped to the 33-yard line. So he'll lose six on the play. And it will be fourth down and ten as Craig Rutledge, the strong safety, along with Mark Whalen, team up for the Bruins. And good pressure. Good pressure on Kosar. Again, they don't get the sack, and this is not a screen. They don't get the sack, 95 Whalen, but they make him move around. He couldn't throw the ball downfield, had to dump it off. So Rick Tutin of Miami will be kicking to Ron Pitts. This is his fifth punt of the ball game. His average today, 38 yards. That is below his season average of 41.6. And Pitts takes it to the 35-yard line. A little hesitation. And he has a six or seven yard return. And there's a flag on the play. A 32-yard kick and a seven-yard return. 3.39, that is the time remaining here in the third quarter. UCLA out in front of Miami by five points. The score is 29 to 24. In the sun-drenched Valley of the Sun, it'll be a clipping penalty against the Bruins, so they will lose that advantage of field position. This, by the way, is the first meeting ever between the University of Miami and the University of California at Los Angeles. It's California against Florida for the Bruins, 17 of 22 starters from California for Miami, 18 of 22 starters from the state of Florida, east against west. Bono, a little pump fake as pressure comes back to Gaston Green. Green breaks the tackle. 36-yard line. First down for Gaston Green and UCLA. Derwin Jones and Bruce Fleming make the tackle for the Hurricanes of Miami. Talked a little earlier, Charlie, about Steve Bono being unsettled in the first quarter. Now he seems very confident, moving around very well, pumps, dumps the ball off. He knew he wanted to get the ball to Green all along. He is a very confident quarterback at this point and should play well for the rest of the ball game. And Tom Lasorda is from Steve Bono's hometown. That is Norristown, Pennsylvania. We have whistles and flags. Gaston Green has rushed for 125 yards in 15 carries. He scored two touchdowns, has three receptions for 32 yards. I mentioned in the first half that in the USC game, when he came in for the injured Danny Andrews, that he rushed for 134 yards against USC. The only man to go over the century mark 
against the Trojans this year. That information courtesy of Merlin Olsen, who called for the Rose Bowl. <laughs> They're watching us there as they get ready for the big game in the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all. What's happening down in Dallas? Well, Doug Flutie has things well in hand in the third, 31 to 14. Back up, guys! First down and 15. Here's Gaston Green. Three yards to the 35. It'll be second down and 12. Bruce Fleming is the man who brings him down. You know, with all the success that Gaston Green has had today, Charlie, it's not really surprising to me because I feel that a running back can have a quicker influence, whether he's a freshman in, in college or a rookie in the professional ranks, a freshman running back can have a, a rookie running back could have an influence on a team quicker than any other position. It takes longer to learn an offensive line or a quarterback or wide receiver, but a running back just needs to get that ball and use his ability and take off and run, and he's certainly done that very well. Second and 12, Bono, quick screen to the left side to Green coming out of the backfield. Green across the 40 and out of bounds at the 43-yard line, so he picks up eight yards. It'll be third down and four. George Myra Jr. was the man who was there for the game. All Gaston Green has to learn here is, okay, I'm going to go out here and fake. Now, that's the part they taught him. As a freshman, it took a little bit of time. Now, this is all God-given talent right here. He says, if you give me the ball, I'm going to take off and run with it. You know, there's a lot of things that go on at every bowl game, and particularly at the Fiesta Bowl, a lot of socializing and visiting and special events and the parades and the ball and the band pageantry and we had something extra special happen to one of the ucla Bruins. we just want to mention it in passing we'll work it in right after this flood green in motion the throw is to green on the right side 45 and green goes out of bounds after picking up the first down of the 49 yard line Ken Calhoun was there for the defense. The Gaston Green offense. It's Gaston right and Gaston left. Not a bad call either. Not bad if you want to get some offense going. Here's another look. He's looking downfield, really. Bono gives it a look and then says, I don't like it. I've got my main man out here. Let me let him break some tackles for me. Six, five receptions already in the ballgame. 47 yards, and he's a true freshman, not a redshirt. First down for UCLA at their own 49-yard line. Bruins out in front, 29-24. Just over two minutes to go in the third. James Primus is the ball carrier. He comes in to give Gaston just a, a breath of fresh air. You see Primus talking with Bono there. They had a slight problem on the exchange. Primus going a little bit wider than Bono thought he would be going for the, uh, for the handle. And now Mel Farr Jr. The freshman comes into the ball game. His dad, of course, played at UCLA and Detroit. 47 yard line, second down and six. Bono to throw. He's in trouble and sacks and loses the ball. Almost recovered by Miami. Pops up Jim McCullough. Was it McCullough or Duval Love? Duval. Duval Love. Who you will see on NBC in the Hula Bowl. Hey, great hands, Duval. The senior from Fountain Valley recovered it. So all that action, the ball still at the 47-yard line. Here's another look. The problem here, Bono, when things get a little hot, he doesn't tuck the ball away. It pops out. Cameron, number 64, should have had it, but uh, Duval was right there to take care of the, uh, the work. <laughs> I jumped right up at him. How could you miss that one, Duval? Loss of a yard, third down and seven. Here's Bono to throw. Stands in, fires, and it is complete. Tight end, Derek Tunnell, first down at the 35-yard line. A gain of 12 on the play. Daryl Fullington with the tackle. That is the time remaining in the third quarter. Bruins leading, leading Miami 29-24. Here's Bono in action. I see a surge of confidence coming up in this man. He's waiting for his receivers, takes his time, waits for the man to cross. Sherrard, underneath, should have kept going. He was throwing that ball to Tunnell the entire way. But I, I really feel a surge of confidence in this offensive unit, and especially Bono. At the Miami 35-yard line, first down for the Bruins. Marcus Greenwood is now in as a running back. 
He replaces Brian Wiley. He carries for the Bruins as the third quarter winds its way down. That is the end of the third. UCLA 29, Miami 24. Back after these men's three-yard line, second down and eight. Bono, a little play action, faking six of six in the second half. Goes for seven of seven. He's got it in a touchdown to Mike Young. Seconds into the fourth quarter. Jimmy Johnson, head coach of Miami. The Bruins stretch the margin. 35 to 24, looking for one more from John Lee. Oh, and they've got it. It's a good call, Charlie, by the uh, by the UCLA offensive coordinator. Play action fake. Lucius Delegal, number 16, is going to be all by himself trying to cover Young. You don't expect a, a takeoff pattern, one straight down the field, when you're on about the 30, 35 yard line. That's what Delegal was relying on. Delegal starting his first ball game, he's a fourth year senior starting his first ball game, gets beat for the touchdown. And the Bruins have the lead. yards deep it'll be down in the end zone to the valley of the sun living up to its name the temperature in the 70s a gorgeous day for the 14th annual fiesta bowl miami trailing now by 12 points 36 24 fourth quarter 14 54 remaining kozar fire sidearm pass complete he goes to eddie brown as all america receiver brown fighting his way for yardage looking for any kind of an opening and he'll lose about five in the melee that followed and I just still barely picks up the first down he had a first down by about six or seven yards and almost didn't, didn't make it Greg Rutledge finally chased him down Brown was shaken up in the first half when he was speared and he's been shaken up again here Kosar back to pass on first down, down 12 points in the fourth quarter. They've been in this position before this year and come back. Eddie Brown just looking for somewhere to go. We've got a timeout on the field. The score, UCLA 36, Miami 24. We'll be back in a moment. Action Miami at their own 31-yard line, first down. Brian Blades with a touchdown reception. Has replaced him. Blades goes deep on a streak pattern. Juggled and almost intercepted by James Washington for his second interception of the ball game. Dennis Price was there with the coverage along with Washington. So bring it back to the Miami 31. It'll be second down and 10. Take a look at the protection that Kosar is enjoying. A lot of room to step up and throw. As you see, man-to-man -man coverage, good coverage. This time, Price, number six, sees the ball coming, and Blades can't make the play. Washington almost gets over for the deflection. Eddie Brown back in the ball game with that 4-4 speed, second down and 10. He is wide to the right. Shakespeare is wide to the left. Williams and Bratton are the setbacks. And Bratton on the receiving end. He juggles it and he catches it. Boy, the ball is squirting all over the place. It'll be third down. Ken Norton Jr. was there. It'll go for a loss of a yard back to the 30. So it's third down and nine. Now, he said a lot of things happen at bowl games. Well, number 36, Ted Henderson of the UCLA Bruins. Well, Ted decided to go the other night mountain climbing. Didn't realize that the sun could set so quickly in the valley of the sun. And he got trapped on the side of a mountain. They had to rescue him by helicopter. And he has heard of at least they asked, the, they asked Terry Donahue if uh, he was going to uh, penalize him anyway. He says, no, he said he's got so much flack about it already. I don't want to add to his troubles. Third down. Flag is down. Kozar. Pass complete. Eddie Brown to the 40. 35. Needs a block. Can't find it. There's a face mask flag drop at the 26-yard line, but a flag drop back at the 23-yard line. You 
usually expect offensive holding and then the face mask at the end of the play to offset each other. I think they're going to bring this back, Charlie. Call it offsetting penalties. Holding against the Canes of Miami, face mask against UCLA. That's it. So they'll offset. It's a tough break for the University of Miami because a good deep square end pattern, something that Terry Donahue said going into the ball game, they throw deeper patterns than any team we've played all year. Of course, you have to have time to be able to throw it, but a big play can can come about from a deep square end because he comes out the other side and, and that play will come back. 13 minutes, 22 seconds left to go here. The score, UCLA 36, Miami 24. Hurricane, face masking against the Bruins. Penalties offset. The foul will be replayed. Third down and 10, back at the 30-yard line. Shakespeare is wide to this side. And we have jumping for the Bruins with the snap flags down. Blades is the wide receiver. We're going to whistle the ball dead, stop the play. So then we'll come back and sort this one out. A little, little jumping by the Bruin defensive line. The question is, were they pulled off? Or did it just come off on the, the change of cadence by Kozar? Dead ball foul. Illegal procedure Illegal against UCLA. Third down and five at the 35. Go ahead. Excuse me, Charlie. You can't be very happy. Jimmy Johnson. Uh, the number of penalties that his offense has committed today, and then, of course, the number of points that his defense has allowed has continued the nightmare that he finished the season with against Maryland and Boston College. And uh, you can be sure that once he gets his, his, uh, his hands really on this program and comes back in next year in the spring practice and next fall, that this defense is going to be a lot different than it, than it has been the last three ball games. Third down and five. Trailing by 12. Ozark can get it back in bunches. Not the really good defensive play. Willie Smith, the tight end, the intended receiver, and Ron Pitts was there. Number 84, Willie Smith. Pitts, number 47. He just goes down to the inside, starts bringing to the outside. Pitts dives for the ball. Good play, forces him to punt. Ron Pitts set to return the kick of Rick Toop. We were surprised that we would see Pitts in the ball game. He had knee surgery, did not play against USC, and then he had a wart removed from his foot this week, just three or four days ago, but he is in going all the way. We've got a timeout, 3,310 from here on to the Rose Bowl and then to the Orange Bowl on NBC. Steve Bono. And Bono Cox fires, and he misses Mike Young. Now, Bono has completed now 14 of 24 for 166 yards and two touchdowns. In the second half, that is the first throw that he has missed in the second half. He's now 7 of 8 for 101 yards in the second half. Mike Sherrard has three receptions for 52 yards and a touchdown. Gaston Green has five receptions for 47 yards. And Mike Young has three for 46 and a touchdown. Bruins at their own 29, second down and 10. A gain of a yard on the play. It'll be third down and nine. Bruce Fleming was there for the defense along with Jerome Brown. Also here on the sideline wondering what he has to do to win a football game. He's scored over 40 points in the last two and has him uh, 24 points here and he's 12 points behind, but... It takes defense to win ball games also. Brian Wiley was the last ball carrier. Gaston Green rushing 16 carries, 128 yards and two touchdowns. Third down and nine. Bono has pressure, loops it, and it was cut off. They were on uh, different pages of the playbook, or either that or the book was upside down. You got that exactly right. <laughs> 
There was a little miscommunication. The wide receiver ran one route and broke it off, and the quarterback throwing the ball downfield. But that's where timing and communication with your receivers and quarterback pays off. Now here's an opportunity for Miami. Kevin Bonafé will be kicking, and Stanley Shakespeare with a, any kind of a return will give the Canes good field position. However, Bonafé was the 15th ranked punter in major colleges this year. Not that good a kick. And takes a Miami bounce, goes out of bounds in the neighborhood of the 40-yard line. So the Hurricanes will have the ball on their own 40 yards. We'll be back in just a moment. 6-24. They have the ball on their own 40-yard line. Bernie Kozar, the quarterback. And he gives to Melvin Bratton. Bratton picks up a couple of yards on the play. It'll be second down and eight. Neil Delacano, the first man there for the defense. And Lee Knowles, the second. Still a lot of time on the clock, but I'm surprised that Miami just doesn't come out throwing. Well, I think that's what they thought UCLA was thinking also. A run on first down sometimes is good if you're a passing football team late in the ball game. In other words, that's what UCLA thought, and that's what we thought that UCLA thought. Therefore, we'll counter with a run, and UCLA, that's probably what they thought that we thought, so we'll counter with a run defense. A lot of thinking going on. Come back, batter, pass is complete to Eddie Brown, and he picks up the first down at the UCLA 46-yard line. And Dennis Price makes the tackle for the Bruins. A gain of 11 yards on the play and the first down. This is one of the reasons why Eddie Brown and Bernie Costa are so successful. Eddie Brown, first team All-American, goes deep down the field. Costa throws the ball way back short. He keeps coming back till he finds the football. You can't really stop pass patterns like that if you keep coming away from the man that's covering. The ball just outside the UCLA 46-yard line. Five seconds on the 25-second clock. Those are his time. Fire sideline batter. And he's, he's got it at the 41-yard line. This time it's Brian Blades who scored the touchdown in the wrestling match with two defenders. Phillips and Price were there for UCLA. Gain of five, second down and five. UCLA 36, Miami 24. Miami led 14-7 at the end of the first quarter. UCLA by one at the half, 22-21. Now 36-24, building off a 29-24 margin going into the fourth quarter. Bruins scored in the first play of the fourth. Here's Warren Williams. Williams with the fresh legs to the 29-yard line. That is a gain of 12. And the first down for Miami, Darrell Oliver, who has scored a touchdown in the ballgame, getting just a bit of a breath here as the chains are being moved. Ten minutes, 23 seconds left to go in the 14th edition of the Fiesta Bowl. First down, UCLA 29-yard line. Are keeping both backs in the block. Completes the pass on the far side to Shakespeare. And he moves to the 19-yard line. That is a gain of 10. Right at the first down marker, Dennis Price was there for UCLA. And while we check it out, it is a first down. Let's go back to a scoring recap with Green opening it up for UCLA from six yards out. Oliver then countered with a 34-yard run. 68-yard return for Brown, and then it was the pass to Blades in the wrestling match, and a 21 to seven lead. Then Green, 72 yards away, a Fiesta Bowl, a Fiesta Bowl record, and we'll finish that up right after this play, our scoring recap to bring you up to get to date, and here's Bratton, a sweep to the right side. He could go in to score, and he does, yes! 19 yards. Yeah. 
60 yard drive in six plays and 949 left to go Charlie they talk about Eddie Brown being all American first team for his catching and receiving he threw a devastating block on the corner that time that allowed Bratton to get around the corner and score Bratton's got to thank his wide receivers for some of that yardage that he gets to the outside two points 36 to 30 Cozar to throw for it, and it is intercepted. That just erases the two points. Interception by Rutledge. So the score will hold at 36 to 30. Let's take another look at the interception by Craig Rutledge. Blocked by his back right here, but if you won't be able to see from this shot, right there, Eddie Brown on the ground makes a good block. Bratton with the speed gets into the end zone the top right of your screen. See if you can see a block right there on number two, Welsh, by Eddie Brown. Bratton gets around the corner. Big play. 36 to 30. Here's Bob Garibaldi on the kickoff return. Slips one tackle and just fights his way to the 14-yard line. So UCLA does not have any type of field position to start this drive. Let's go back to the touchdown drive and the score by Melvin Bratton and watch as he moves ever so close to the right sideline. <laughs> Melvin moving on. Check his right foot right here to see how close it was. Right there. Pretty close. Pretty close and diving past the pylon. White shoe and white marker, hard to tell. Bratton 11 carries, 57 yards and the touchdown. Gaston Green. Green will pick up about three on the play. Willie Lee Broughton making the tackle. Now let's go back to the scoring recap, and we have an extra added attraction at the end. There was the safety, and Josh Shinnick received credit for that, but he was joined by a group of teammates. And then Cox with the 31-yard field goal. That was followed by Sherrard, the 10-yard pass, 29-24 UCLA, third quarter then. Young, the 33-yard pass, opening play of the fourth quarter. And the one that you just saw, of course, and that was Melvin Bratton, scoring from 19 yards away. Little play action fake by Bono. Pass is complete to the tight end. Tunnel down the sidelines, out of bounds at the 38-yard line. A gain of 21 on the play and a first down. So here come the Bruins. Tolbert Bain defensively was there for the Canes of Miami. In the Cotton Bowl, 31-28 fourth quarter score. Boston College uh, having that ball game not well in hand like they did at one time. It looked to be a runaway at the start. And we have a lot of people, you know, and let's be honest about it, we have a lot of people flipping back for both ball games. We've got a good one here, and right now that one in... Uh, the one in Dallas is also becoming a close contest. Here's Bono. All the time in the world going deep. A flag will go down. Mike Young intended receiver. That will be pass interference. It'll be 15 yards previous spot. They'll bring it back to the line of scrimmage. They did not need to push him out. He was already out. I don't think he could have even caught the ball. I don't either. I think the ball would have been out of bounds, and I don't know. Let's take another look and see. But the ball, the coverage was good on it. Take a look as he gets outside the pocket. The ball was going, the ball was well out of bounds. They hit him when he was in bounds, but the ball was not catchable. But there was no need to even push him. There was no need for the contact. Well, they didn't see the ball coming, obviously. And Jimmy Johnson, as we take a look at him right here and talking with him earlier, he said one of the real problems has been in the defensive backfield. They've just been so young in their secondary that they've made a lot of mistakes. And today uh, we, we saw earlier Lewis, Lewis Delegao, who is in there, who is a senior, who is in there playing for Tolbert Bain, who is a freshman, who has not played that well in the last couple of ball games. He played very well most of the year, but Delegao is playing well. He's been beaten today, and he's a senior. So contagious in the secondary. Here's Gaston Green. 
The line of scrimmage, the Miami 43. He'll go to the 38-yard line. He'll pick up about five. Bruce Fleming with the tackle along with Reggie Sutton. Now, of course, pass interference in the, in the National Football League is at the spot of the foul in college football. It is 15 yards from the previous spot, that being the previous line of scrimmage in this case. Second down and five. And we have eight minutes and 19 seconds, time remaining and counting. 36, UCLA, 30, Miami. Bruins have the ball and a six-point lead. Bono fakes the pitch out, gives him the handoff to Brian Wiley. And the Hurricane defensive line was just sitting there and waiting. Willie Lee Broken is the man who made first contact. They'll lose a yard on the play. Might get a loss of two to the 40. So it'll be third down and seven. We look for Bono to throw here. Well, they were doing a little bit more than sitting there, Charlie. They had the safeties blitzing up tight. And I think the University of Miami now feels like, hey, we cannot afford to give them any more points. John Lee is in field goal range. If they get another first down or some yardage, they want to get them out of that range. Gerard and Young are the wide receivers. Bono rolling out as pressure and he is sacked. Kevin Fagan, number 95, the strength of that defensive line coming through and making a big play, which eliminates the possibility of a three-point field goal by Lee and gives the opportunity to Jimmy Johnson and Bernie Kosar coming back for another score. That is the first sack of the ball game for Miami, so Kevin Bunafe will be kicking. Stanley Shakespeare is set for the return. Notice the shadows, though. That means that Shakespeare is looking right in the sun, a high, lazy floater. The up back signals for a fair catch that is Ken Calhoun, and he takes the Bruins, have the lead, and we'll be back in just a moment to the Fiesta Bowl. 14th Fiesta Bowl. Miami with the ball, trailing by six. They have the ball on their own 22-yard line. Bernie Koza. Rolling right, pressure from behind. Pass is complete, tight end. Willie Smith. Smith is out of bounds at the 33, a gain of 11 and a first down. Ken Norton, Jr., the first man there. Ron Butler, the second for the defense. Sometimes you have to improvise a little bit. Number 84, Willie Smith blocking on the safety that is blitzing. He sees Kosar in trouble. He says, I was supposed to block, but hey, I'm here. Give me a little uh, pass, and I'll get what I can for you. Mark it for 12 as they spot the ball at the 34-yard line. Smith has really been a big addition to that offense because they lost their tight end last year, Dennison. If they didn't have a good tight end, they'd seen a lot of coverage on the outside. Second team All-America. He's a 6'8 high jumper. Here's Kozak. Going deep. Oliver. Did he come down with it? Yes, he did. Daryl Oliver, who has scored a touchdown in the ball game, comes down with the reception. Dennis Price was the defender, 35 yards on the play. Kosar looking to his left. Watch Kosar. Now he looks back to his left side, then comes back to the right. He wants to get the ball downfield to Oliver between the two safeties. Number six, Price. And Delacono, the linebacker, was out there, but he threw the ball in between the two defensive men. At the UCLA 32-yard line, first down for Miami. 36-30, Miami okay. down by six with 6.13 left to go. Here's Brad. Brad just leads for a yard, maybe two. Let's mark it to 31. And Lee Knowles was leading against him along with Ken Norton Jr. It'll be second down and nine. And by the way, R.C. Mitch. Mitch quarter. Now they're only down six. They were down to the University of Florida early in the year and came back and won the ball game. They were down to Boston College in the last game of the year and came back. The offense, the offensive linemen, they all have tremendous confidence in Kosar and the receivers to get the job done. And I think you're seeing it here again today. Tremendous confidence and poise by the University of Miami offense. But I'm beginning to wonder now, as well as UCLA's offense has played, you have just over five and a half minutes to go. You want to score, but not too soon. <laughs> yeah. Now they're facing that dilemma. But first things first, second down and nine. 31-yard line. Gozar looks left all the way, throws, completes the pass. 
near the 25-yard line to Stanley Shakespeare. Ron Fitz closes on him immediately at the 25. It'll go for six, so it'll be third down and three. And again, playing the numbers game, remember that the margin is six points. And so that's a pair of field goals by Greg Cox, and they're pretty much within his range right now, but you're talking for a tie. Yeah, and I don't think they would want to get in a field goal kicking contest at this point, because if they did, I think the uh, University of uh, UCLA could come back and kick one themselves. Because they have the great John Lee as their field goal kicker. Third down and three. Here's Oliver. Oliver, first down to the 12-yard line. James Washington makes the tackle at the 12. They needed three. They got 13 in the first down. University of Miami running left. Berticelli, 79. Moore, number 50. Coming around, Bratton getting a good block. Oliver jumping. <laughs> he said the jump worked once. I'll try it again. <laughs> Darrell Oliver now with eight carries has an exact 100 yards as he hits the century mark in the Fiesta Bowl. 12-yard line. First and 10. Here's Darrell Oliver. To the four-yard line. He picks up eight. It'll be second down and a couple for the first down. Second down and four for the score. We're moving on the four-minute mark. Time remaining in the game. To your left of your screen, you'll see the blocking right there. 52 is Heffernan with a great block on the linebacker. Norton just turns him right on his back. Norton may get up and say, hey, you want to fight? <laughs> And Heffernan should say, if your dad is who I think it is, I don't think I want to. <laughs> and his dad is. So, okay. Second down and two for the first down. Kozar trying to lean over the top on second down and two for the first down. He gets just one yard. I'm a little surprised at that call. I am, too. Unless they, did he see something? Or Could have checked it off. Checked it off? Jimmy Johnson gives Kosar the, the option to check off whenever he wants, and not only to the passing game, but to the running game. He can check to a lot of different runs, and I think that is what he's doing down here. That last play, the play before this one, was certainly a check off. Down by six, though. They can figure they're in four-down situation, forget the field goal attempt. Third down and one. Three-yard line. Big to Oliver. Has a man open. He's there. Bradford, touchdown. Freshman Melvin Bratton has now scored two touchdowns in the ball game. He scored four against BC. So six in his last two outings. Melvin Bratton and Gaston Green, I think the next uh, several years, you're going to hear a lot about those two young men. Johnson back on top, and I don't know how, how safe he feels the way his defense has been playing uh, the last two months. Not back on top yet, but now he is. 37-36, the Cage by one. 2.58 left to go. Don't go away. Yard line by Mark Selig, the kicker. Sometimes you get a little head start. Right there, Melvin Brandt, number five, lined up behind Kosar, gets a little bit of a head start. He's the man that's going to receive the touchdown pass wide open in the flat. You win some and you lose some. Miami 37, UCLA 36, 2.52 left to go, and this, the most exciting Fiesta Bowl of them all. Here comes Steve Bono and the Bruins of UCLA. The key man has been Gaston Green. And here he is. Leans to the 35. He has three. It'll be second down and seven. Reggie Sutton with the tackle. The clock moving. 240 and counting. And a Miami player shaking up. Ball on the 35 yard line. And that is George Myra Jr who is the injured player for Miami. So that stops the clock at the 237 mark. And a chance for us to remind you once again, from here we'll be going to the Rose Bowl and then to the Orange Bowl. But first of all, let's go to a commercial. Okay, back to the game, second down and seven. 35-yard line, Bono scrambles. And his 
brought down by Kevin Fagan. It was a big, big play by, by uh, Fagan because Sherrard had run right past Sutton down the left sideline. Two minutes and 20 seconds as UCLA stops the clock. A gain of a yard, so it's third down and six. Now, let's look back and ahead at the same time. The longest field goal in the record book in the Fiesta Bowl, Luis Zendejas of 74 yards. That was in 1983, Zendejas of Arizona State in the game against Oklahoma. Now, John Lee, the great kicker of UCLA, has a 51-yarder in the bank today along with a 33-yarder. You didn't say 74 yards, did you? Well, it's 54 yards. Don't 50. say 74. I'm so excited. <laughs> Terribly excited about Maybe it. Maybe a 74-yarder from where they are right no, now. But I think UCLA has relied on this man right here, 41 of 42 field goals from inside the 40 all year long. They feel like all they have to do is move the ball maybe 25, 30, 35 yards, and they can win this ballgame. UCLA trailing by one, facing third down and six. No reason now with 2.20 left to go on the Fiesta Bowl that you're not in a four-down situation, like you say. They need another 30, 35 yards somewhere in that neighborhood. Give John Lee an opportunity to win it. His career long is 52 yards. And if memory serves me correct, that took place in the stadium against Arizona State. I'm not 100% sure of that. UCLA I should be, but I'm has not. never lost in the stadium, that's for certain. The only, the only tie was uh, in the Fiesta Bowl uh, game itself. John Lee, the point being John Lee kicks well in the desert. I thought that's what I was alluding to. All right, here's Bono. Third down and six. Has a man open. Sherrard has it. Fumbled it. Chuckled it just for a moment, but he retained possession at the 50-yard line. Third and six. Picked up 14 yards on the play. And the first down. Sherrard, 82, is going to beat Sutton. Sutton has him all over the field. Has deep help, so he should be on him much tighter than he is. Sherrard makes a good move, gets to the inside, and gets the first down. I am really impressed with Bono, Charlie, the way he's playing the second half. We can see in the second half why the pro scouts rate this senior from Norristown, Pennsylvania so highly. He's in the top three on all the scouting reports for the quarterbacks in this class. Pass complete to Mike Young. Young spinning out. 39-yard line. That'll be a first down. Gain of 11. I kind of wonder what Steve Bono would have done in an offensive system such as Miami's, for instance. Howard Schnellenberger brought an offensive system where the quarterback could not only roll out but sit in the pocket. He throws a strike there. Or Schnellenberger moves on now to Louisville. And Bernie Kosar, Gary Stevens, the offensive coordinator at the University of Miami. I just wonder if, if, if Bono would have been in an offensive system like that. And certainly he'd be much further along than, than the I formation option for offense that uh, UCLA has. Meanwhile, John Lee, the All-America kicker, the number one kick scorer in the NCAA major colleges, 104 points this past season. His long this year matched in the Fiesta Bowl of 51 yards, his career long 52 yards. They're getting closer and closer. And if you're wondering about any wind, there's not much wind blowing today at all, so that shouldn't be a factor. It is a first down. They brought the change across to double check. 39-yard line of Miami. Ryan Wiley, and he'll get a yard to the 38. Dallas Cameron with the tackle, second down and nine. That's a 55-yard kick at that point. So uh, UCLA may be content to stay on the ground and say, we just need five or six more yards. Let's not take any kind of chances. It's interesting, the defensive philosophy now with what's happened to the University of Miami in the last three games and Jimmy Johnson's philosophy at Oklahoma State, where he's from. Now they're up there blitzing, trying to get him out of that field goal range. Little pump fake. Sherrard. Did he catch it? Yes, he did! 10-yard line! 28 yards! First down, 116 left to go. Bruins trail by one, 37-36. Well within the range of John Lee. Boy, what a second half photo is that. It's just one man on man, a little out and up. 28 is Martinez. I don't know if you can't see from that shot whether he was in bounds or not, but 
and then it'll look and go. I don't know. I couldn't see any feet inbounds, but couldn't really tell from that shot. Here's Gaston Green. And Green goes out of bounds around the eight or the nine yard line. One minute and 12 seconds. Kozar wants one more opportunity. That's what he's thinking. Do I have to do it one more time? He has done it in the Florida game. He did it in the Boston College game. Flutie came back and took it away from him. Does he have to do it again? Second half. In the second half, Steve Bono has completed 11 of 13, 182 yards, and two touchdowns. Maybe that national scouting combine that had him rated ahead of Doug Flutie knew something as far as potential as a pro. Second down. Here's Green. Green to the six-yard line. UCLA will stop the clock. I think Miami's going to Miami, stop Miami, no. Clock. Miami, yeah. you're right. One minute and three seconds. Of course, Miami feeling that if we're going to fall behind never will. Shakespeare. Shakespeare. I never will forget that. A game early in the year, National Television, University of Florida against Miami, when they took it down within like 25, 30, 40 seconds and even scored. They feel like they can win if they get enough time, a minute. There's plenty of time for them to score. They've got to call timeout here. UCLA with the best field goal kicker in the nation. And we have a problem. We have to name an outstanding player on each team. <laughs> I have narrowed it down to about six players yes. on each team. Yeah. Yeah. Bono has certainly played well the second half. Of course, Gaston Green has played well. James Washington with a sack early on in the ball game, with an interception, uh, several big plays. It's been a game of big plays, a fantastic fiesta ball. One minute and three seconds, and there's still a lot of big plays left. I have that feeling. standing right behind Bernie Kosar, so if he had any uh, any ideas, I'm sure the, the father, with the good father, would whisper him into Bernie's ears. Nothing Wiley fancy. just leading in. Ryan Wiley, so now you look for John Lee. UCLA making sure David Clinton Miami takes another timeout that stops the clock with 55 seconds. Clinton is the holder. Terry Theodore, the snapper. And of course, the kicker is John Lee. And while we have a timeout, NBC Sports would like to thank Bruce Skinner, the executive director of the Fiesta Bowl, John Tucker, the associate executive director, Tom Fredina, the president of the board of directors. Dewey Shade, our television liaison from Arizona State University, operations manager, and one of the great track stars of all time, Olympian Herman Frazier. Hey, Herman. Good man. One of my favorite people in the world. Here we go. 55 seconds left to go. John Lee for the lead. From the... 12-yard line, an attempt of 22 yards for John Lee. He is hit from 51 and from 33. Miami 37, UCLA 36. It's good. The Bruins now lead by two, 39. 37 with 51 seconds left. You don't see many Asian football players, but John Lee has won. He was trying to get into the uh, locker room at the Rose Bowl one, uh, one day when they were playing a game there. The security guard wouldn't let him in, says, you're not a football player. He had to go and get one of the coaches to convince the, the security guard that he was actually on the football team. John Lee, 22 yards away. He is three for three today. And UCLA has the lead by two, 39-37.
and the Hurricanes of Miami, led by Bernie Kais Kozar, have 51 holding, seconds left. Holding hands with the good Padre, Divine Providence. I don't know. Getting Bernie, the word, whatever. Bernie, Bernie's getting all the help he can get. <laughs> 51 seconds left. Oliver. Oliver to the 15, to the 20, and he is spun out at the 23-yard line by Craig Rutledge. 46 seconds left. Bernie Kosar was burned by Doug Flutie with a Hail Mary. Now he gets his opportunity. 46 seconds. Scott Mitchell and Rich Dyripple, our spotters, Dennis Benician, our statistician. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. It's been a good one. 23-yard line. Miami in their own territory, trailing now 39-37. From here, it's on to the Rose Bowl and then the Orange Bowl. But can the Orange of the Hurricanes pull it out? yard line you pick up about seven it'll be second down and three 38 seconds left when the University of Miami was burned by Boston College late in the year they started about at this area did Boston College worked it up to about the 45 or 50 yard line with some short passes and then of course the last Hail Mary at the end of the ball game Kosar has got the kind of arm that he can do that in the Cotton Bowl, Boston College in front of Houston now, 45-28. Here it's UCLA, 39, Miami, 37. This one is drilled and caught by Eddie Brown. 48-yard line, 18 yards, first down, 31 seconds left. Now, when this game's over, we'll be going to the Rose Bowl. We've got a problem. The Toyota Outstanding Players of today's game. We're going to mention those two names right at the end of the game. Now, what will happen? Each player that we mention at the end of the game will receive a special trophy and achievement, and Toyota will donate $1,000 to the general scholarship fund of each school. of UCLA, the great freshman Gaston Green, and for the Hurricanes of Miami, their great freshman who scored two touchdowns, Melvin Bratton, and $1,000 will be given to the general scholarship funds in their names. So congratulations to those two freshmen. A lot of football in front of them, and what a great Fiesta Bowl we've had. And a lot of great players. You know, Charlie, we could have given that award to one of any of ten players, uh, Kosar included, but... Uh, it's got to be a happy day for Terry Donahue. Coming into this ball game, he thought if it was going to be a high-scoring game, that there was no way he could be involved in a high-scoring game. He felt like 21-17 would be his. If anybody scored 30 in the 30s, he thought that he would be on the losing end by a big margin. And by the way, happy holidays also from our producer, Ken Edmondson, our director, Andy Rosenberg. And now we'll just let the clock run out. Or as Miami know, they want to stop the clock. So it won't be official for nine more seconds. And from here, we'll be going on to the Rose Bowl and then to the Orange Bowl. And what a way to start the day and the new year on NBC. 
I just hope the Big Ten can come back in the Rose Bowl and get a little respectability, <laughs> having gone to Purdue, and, uh, you know, we've been embarrassed out there a few years. Uh, well, it just so happens that University of Southern California, one of my numerous alma maters. Well, that's so. true. You've been around, but uh, I just want to <laughs> tell you right. that in the 1967 Rose Bowl, was the good. Purdue Boilermakers took care of your Southern Cal Trojans. That's right, but in the 1985 Fiesta Bowl, California against Florida, I would have to say that it is California by a narrow margin. The final, UCLA 39, Miami 37 for Bob Greasy. I'm Charlie Jones. Stay tuned for the Rose Bowl right after these messages from your local station. Happy New Year, everybody.